a good happy Monday morning to the Delaware Valley and beyond. We're so glad you joined us today. We're so glad that Bill Calarulo is joining us today also. William, how are you today? I'm doing great, man. I'm in a great spot today with Bob and Ray. Always fun. Uh, do you get William at all? Ever? I get William a lot when I was an attorney. It's oh. always William. Very formal. Oh, William. okay. Huh. I get Billy. Little Billy. Is there a big <laughs> Billy? I'm a, I'm a junior, yeah. Oh, okay. Raymond, how are you this morning? How was your weekend? Hope everything was well. It was great, Bob. I appreciate you asking. How yes. was your weekend? Uh, it was fine. Don't worry about it. Uh, did you do some uh, dancing and stuff at your wedding up in northern uh, New York? It was great, yes. Some dancing, a yeah. little bit of drinking, a little bit of fun, you know? Uh, when so. I texted you on Friday night, I wanted to make sure you were where you had to be, make sure your drive went okay. You said you were sitting. This was so cute. You said you were sitting and having, a, I think, a glass of wine with Nona. That's right. Glass of wine with Nona. It's a great time. That's awesome. Yeah. yeah. We made it up to upstate New York. We found the Airbnb all well and good. I love it. Had a great weekend. And a great weekend for sports it was also. Whether your favorite teams won or lost, it was just a great weekend. And we're going to get right into it with the headlines of the weekend. Now, the front page. The stories everyone's talking about. 97.5, The Fanatic. All right, a 2-0 and weekend for your Philadelphia 76ers as they win in Memphis on fr on Saturday night. And then last night, they go to San Antonio and they pull some unbelievable stuff. A great play at the end of regulation, drawn up by Nick Nurse. Tyrese Maxey goes nuts. And Tyrese Maxey had a couple of things to say after the win. Yeah, I just stayed aggressive, extremely aggressive, man. I, uh, I think I came out you know, a little past at the beginning of the game, you know, but I came back in uh, after I got subbed out in the first and kind of got it going a little bit. And like you said, uh, in the fourth quarter, it was winning time. I mean, we were down seven going into the fourth. Uh, I knew we had to win that quarter by at least eight or at least tied to seven to keep going, and uh, we was able to do that. I said this like uh, maybe like two weeks ago. We, we can't really look at the standings and, and worry about where we are in the standings. For us, we have to worry about playing the right basketball and stepping in the right direction come postseason. I feel like uh, wherever we end up uh, come postseason, we'll be prepared and ready to play. And uh, we don't really, you know, we don't, it doesn't matter who we play, uh, where we're going to play, uh, we're going to go out there and we're going to compete. And I feel like this team is doing that. That's pretty good. Tyrese Maxey must have stole Kincaid's calculator when he saw that they were down seven going into the fourth, so he figured they there had to outscore them by eight to win or seven to tie. Good on him, but a great night for him as he goes for 52. 52. Kelly Oubre goes for 26. Great play, as I said, drawn up by Nick Nurse at the end of regulation. He has Maxey go back door. Great pass by Nick Batum. That's five wins in a row for your 76ers. They now stand at 44 and 35. They are the seventh seed right now, one game behind the Pacers. Kincaid did all this. If this team loses this and they win that and all that, that uh, just keep in mind, that's the same man that had the Eagles clinching the number one seed at Thanksgiving. So don't worry about all that stuff. Just worry about this. I'm just kidding you, John. Just worry about this 76ers team right now, and they are a lot of fun to watch. As I said, five wins in a row. I will have a trivia question for the two of you, Bill and Ray, before we get done this segment concerning the 76ers. Your Philadelphia Flyers, nah, not so much. They've lost seven in a row. Uh, John Tortorella started uh, Ivan Fedotov on Friday night, first game of a must-win weekend. That didn't go well. Then he started Sam Erson on Saturday night. That didn't go well. And now there's really no, there's no joy in Mudville at all. So it looks like the Flyers have fallen out of the playoffs. The questions arise, and we'll get into this later on. What does this season mean? You, you went into the season just trying to find a foundation, just trying to find a base of what you're going to be in the future. And then this little playoff thing kept creeping up. And then John Tortorella challenged his team and said, all right, we're talking playoffs now. We have to win. We want to make the playoffs. And how did that team respond? By losing seven in a row. So what is, how does this bode for the organization? We know it wasn't playoff or bust this year. That, that wasn't even a hint of anything. But the fact that it was there and the fact that you lost it, I don't know. Does that, does that go in a bad way for the team? The Phillies, they took two or three from the Nationals. And further proof, Bill and Ray, that Rob Thompson listens to this show. Because what did we ask for on Friday? We said, or I said, I, I don't want to lump you in, Ray. I said, just, just please throw out the normal lineup for most of the weekend. 
And, Ray, you said, well, it's going to be a Sunday lineup probably. And it was. But Friday and Saturday, look what he did. He threw out the same, like, eight guys. Same nine guys in the lineup. And boom, two wins. I loved it. And then yesterday, they fall three to two. Uh, not much hitting going on yesterday. Just an okay outing from Christopher Sanchez. Uh, for the most part, very, very happy that Rob Thompson listened to us. We'll give him further advice as the season goes on. They're now four and five. Probably the big news coming out in the morning show with uh, Kincaid and, and Sal Tunis talked about this a little bit. Spencer Strider for the for the Braves uh, has a, a bad elbow. When you hear your manager say, yeah, it looks bad, when, when they go in and look at the elbow, uh, probably not going to have him. What does that mean for the Phillies? Nothing to me. Like I, 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 he, yeah, maybe it means the Braves win less games, and you. It, it doesn't make the Phillies win more games. You know, I, I've said that before. Like you can't help it if you are a wild card because you win 92, 93, 94, 95 games, and the other teams win in 106. You can only affect that team 12 times a year. So, how does it affect the Phillies? Maybe it does. Maybe it puts the Braves in a place. Uh, of of not goodness when you lose your number one starter and maybe the Phillies if if you know they get the between 92 and 97 wins at this station predicted maybe they do wind up winning that the other Spencer Spencer Turnbull he gets a start tonight at St. Louis 7:45 uh, Phillies still on the road before they come back midweek to here but it's going to be bad weather again believe it or not so we'll see how that all plays out and as far as the Eagles go well not a whole lot going on. Uh, probably some stuff coming up in the near future, and that's why we're lucky enough to have Bill here today. We'll check out what's going on with them. On the national front, Women's College Basketball Championship. You had the semifinals on Friday, which were fantastic. And then the championship game yesterday kind of played out the way a lot of people thought. Uh, South Carolina gets the win, stays undefeated. Dawn Staley, congratulations. I, I, I will give you a little insight. So I've, I made 100 calls last night and text trying to get Dawn Staley to come on this show, but she's in a she's in a, her hyperbolic chamber. Is that what you call it? She's like, no, nobody can get her. Even some of her best friends haven't been able to reach her. So we're going to keep trying for that. We'd love to have Dawn Staley come on the show and talk about only the 10th time that a women's team has gone undefeated and won the championship. But the big story of the season was Caitlin Clark. So her career ends and what a marvelous career it was. And just what a great time. What a great time it was watching college basketball this year. Men's National Championship tonight. I bet you a lot of brackets are still open. Uh, you know, if people went chalk, a lot of people probably had Purdue, Connecticut in the final, and that's what you're going to get tonight. Uh, so that can't... You know, somebody texted me yesterday saying, uh, you know, people making the argument, no, the women's game, men's game's better, this and that and the other. Yeah, well, the women's game was phenomenal yesterday at 3 o'clock on a Sunday. Now you got to go 9.30 on a Monday for the men's game to start. That, that kind of sucks. But national championship, nonetheless, that'll be going on tonight. So there you have it. There's the front page from the weekend. Bill, just your thoughts on this weekend. Great sports uh, going on all around. Uh, anything stick out to you, just like an overview of the weekend? Well, you hit on everything, but you missed one big sporting event, Bob. What's that? WrestleMania, nah. man. Come on now. We had Jason Kelsey, Lane Johnson make an appearance at WrestleMania on Saturday night. I'm not going to be a snob at all and yuck somebody else's yum. I'm not. I had no interest in WrestleMania. I did see it on Twitter. Yeah, to be honest with you, there were so many things on. It was tough to watch WrestleMania. I just watched some highlights because you're right. It was a great sports weekend. We had basketball, hockey, Phillies, the women's championship. So it was really cool. And you mentioned Dawn Staley and Caitlin Clark. I really love that Dawn Staley, after the game, gave credit to Caitlin Clark for lifting up women's basketball all season and putting them on her shoulders and said, hey, she's going to do the same thing for the WNBA. Just a classy move by Dawn Staley. And congratulations. What a season. You're right. Undefeated. I didn't realize it was only the 10th time that's ever happened. Yeah, I was on uh, with Dee Lineham and Kevin Cooney yesterday, and I said to them, I said, what's the story of the uh, – of women's college basketball this year, and they both said Caitlin Clark, and they're right, and everybody was right. Imagine being kind of second fiddle to that, and you went undefeated and won the national championship. And th the emotion Dawn St Staley showed yesterday after the game, you know, we know her. I've been lucky enough to talk to her a few times uh, throughout my career. We know her as just tough as can be, you know, grew up in North Philly, just that, and her just breaking down and bawling her eyes out after the game yesterday. 
there's a lot there, and, and, and the emotion of sports is pretty cool. And it was all there uh, for Dawn Staley yesterday. So, yeah, congratulations to them. Congratulations to some bettors out there. All right, so I have some friends that were betting the game yesterday, but they weren't fully knowledgeable about, you know, they're like, ah, what, what should we do? I said, I'm just letting you know. My son, Kyle, who graduated and got his master's from South Carolina, texted me on Friday night and says, South Carolina beats either one of these teams before Iowa played, beats either one of these teams by double digits on Sunday. I said, really? So I sent that out to my friends. They all made bets. They all won. I gave them Kyle's Venmo. I said, he at least gets 50%. So hopefully my son made a little bit of money off of that. Yeah, they, he was spot on. And it was pretty much an entirely new team from last year, right? Which is... Entirely. Her five starters from last year went to the WNBA. That's incredible. Just a great job coaching and credit to those players as well. But congratulations. But talking about basketball, Bob, what a night from Tyrese Maxey last night. I know you mentioned it early in your, your headlines, but 52 points. But what I loved, we were talking about this before the show, the pass from Nico Batum, the inbound pass yeah. to tie the game to Maxi, and then Ricky Council getting involved late. So that was just a great win without Tobias, without Kyle Lowry, without the big man Joel Embiid. I'm all in. If you listen to my show this weekend, I'm all in. I'm a glutton for punishment. Maybe I get my heart broken again, but I really like this team right now. See, I don't think it's that, Bill, though. I, I don't. I think this team is pretty good. I think with Joel Embiid in there, it's going to be really good. He just looks... I brought this up yesterday also. Uh, Kevin Cooney asked me, he said, is this the best shape he's ever been in coming back from an injury? Because I saw it up close and personal for so many years, him coming back. I said, I don't know about that, maybe, but I can certainly say this. This is the best basketball player he's ever been coming back from an injury. I really believe that, Bill. I think this guy is leaps and bounds ahead of where he's ever been before uh, as far as a basketball player. It certainly looks that way. Well, first of all, you go back to before the injury, he was playing the best basketball of his career. I think Nick Nurse has helped with that as well. But Joel, more focused. I said, and I think we talked about this on Friday a little bit. I said this over the weekend, too. I love his mental state right now. He's not distracted by the MVP race. He said it after the game, too. Hey, that gets toxic sometimes. You know, I don't have any of that in my mind right now. I'm focused on playing basketball. So physically, he looks good. Mentally, he looks good. He'll get his game conditioning up, hopefully, which should happen over time. But you're right. He's doing things we haven't seen him do before. We talked about that floater the other night. Yeah. Was, was pretty cool. So, And I just love the team around him. I think this is the deepest team he's maybe ever played with. Do you agree with that? Uh, could be. I know I know that team that had J.J. Redick and you had, like, uh, Bellinelli, Ilya Sova. That team had some – and uh, Jimmy Butler. That team had some pretty cool pieces. Uh, this might be, I don't want to say a better fit. You're always looking to surround them with shooters. The key is, Bill, in my mind, Buddy Heald. It's got to be Buddy. Now, I think it was you or Ray, one of you guys, before the show started, Ray, it might have been you, said, who played more minutes, Buddy Heald or Ricky Council the fourth? And it was Ricky Council the fourth. Not and, a great sign for Buddy Heald. And, and Ricky Council had also two huge plays, uh, One the, the one pass out where he went up for a lap and reached around with his left hand and threw it out to the wing to Nick Batum, who banged a three. Yeah, not. Uh, but if he's playing better, what do you do? See, this is my biggest question, Bill, and the first one that I want to pose to you today. And I'll, I'll throw it out there to you guys listening. 610-632-0975. You can call in or you can text. Our text has been phenomenal for the, like, week and a half that we've had it. So we appreciate you on there. But like I told you before, different show here. We do like calls. We like to talk. We like to talk to you, the great sports fans of Philadelphia, about sports. So feel free, 610-632-0975. But, Bill, I'll throw this out to you. I am anointing you right now. You are Nick Nurse. Who's your starting lineup for the playoffs? That's such a tough question. That is such a tough question. Now, before last night, we saw Nick Nurse roll out the same starting five two games in a row because Tobias Harris was out. They came out to, what was it, a 17-2 start and then a 12-2 start with that starting five, which was Maxi and Embiid, obviously, and then Oubre, Batum, and Kyle Lowry. I really liked what I saw from those five. Now, are they going to be too small to play against the teams like the Boston Celtics, maybe the Toronto Raptors? 
I don't know, but they looked really good having the three scorers on the court with Embiid, Maxi, and Ubre. But then you got Lowry and Batum who can really facilitate, and Batum hitting some big shots now. So I like that starting five. Do you think that's a possibility? I don't know how you can keep Tobias Harris out of a starting lineup. And we kind of shuffled this around last week. And for all the people, you know, that, that aren't really lovers of Tobias Harris because of the contract, because, you know, he doesn't show up big when he needs to be. I just don't know if you can ask a guy that has been in the league this long and has been a starter for eight years. Eight years it's been since he came off the bench. I don't know if you can ask him to do that. Would it be best for the team? I don't know because I don't know how he would accept it and how he would come off playing with the second unit. It's interesting. The Lynam had a great point yesterday. She said it might be that Nick Nurse changes it due to the opponent. If they're going to go small, then maybe it's it's a, you know, she she actually said, and her father, I think Jimmy Lynam said it, Tobias Harris, Joel Embiid, and uh, Tyrese Maxey are your definite starters. It's the other two positions that might be situational, whether it's an Ubre and Batum or whether it's, you know, this or that, whether it's Kyle Lowry in there or not. I think Lowry is also a starter. I think you have four starters, definitely. And it, I, it, it looks like you can't take Kelly Oubre out of that starting lineup. But Nick Batum, I don't see as a guy coming off the bench either. It's a good problem to have, but Nick Nurse has to figure out all these pieces. But that's why I asked the question earlier, is this the deepest they've ever been? Because you have so many guys who could even be starters on this team. But you didn't mention... Buddy Heald potentially being a starter. We're hoping he even gets minutes at this point, which is a huge 180 from when they made the trade. Darryl Morey said, hey, he's the best the best player available we just traded for. But we really haven't seen that Buddy Heald that much recently. No, and, and what was to talk about Buddy Heald? The three-point shot. The three-point shot and how open the floor would be if he gets to play with Joel Embiid. Can you afford to do that? He went 12 minutes on Friday night only. He only goes 20 minutes last night or Saturday night, I guess it was, 20 minutes last night. Uh, they're struggling to find a minutes now, let alone when Joel Embiid wasn't there. So if you're struggling to find a minutes, are you struggling even more to find a minutes with Joel Embiid? Because ultimately that's what you want to see. You want to see Buddy Heald on the floor with Joel Embiid where the shots would be more wide open. So there's there's all of that. I mean, there's a lot. Of, it's odd, but there's a lot of questions going around uh, about the Sixers team. But like you said, Bill, it's probably a pretty good problem to have. I mean, they got some good players going right now. They do, and I have total trust in Nick Nurse. I really do. I feel great about the head coach right now for the 76ers, and that's not something that we've said in previous years going into the playoffs with Doc Rivers. A lot of people question some of the decision he's made in the past, the adjustments that he failed to make in the playoffs. I don't fear that with Nick Nurse. He'll figure yeah. it out, and whatever starting five he puts out there, in Nick we trust. Yeah, I, I, I'm with you. I'm right there with you. All right, here's your trivia question that I threw out there to you guys. How many times this year has a Sixers player scored 50 or more points? Six. Wow, that was a pretty quick answer. So right, well, confident. I'm not even going to let you guess, Bill, because he's exactly Yeah, that was so confident. Did they announce it last night during the, during the game? No, he had it three times. Max, he's had it three times. Ooh, Sorry. Look at the brain on you. Paying attention to the team, Bob. That's pretty impressive, is it not? Extremely impressive. And Embiid, Six one of those times. was 70. One yeah. of those was 70. I mean, that, that is insane. It, it is. I When I looked it up this morning, I thought, you got to be kidding me. There's there's many, many NBA teams that haven't had a player score 50 or more this year. And the Sixers have done it six times. Equally split, as Ray said, three and three among Embiid and, and Tyrese Maxey. The, so you're the guy I don't go to. to no, the reason that I know this is because I saw, I think it was after Malachi Flynn had his 50-point game, and they did, like, the list of guys who have had 50 points, and it was Embiid with three, and I think he was tied for the lead in the league. And I was like, he's had three 50-point games. He's only played 35, 36 at this point. Yeah. That's insane that he's tied for the league lead in 50-point games with all the time he's missed. And I saw, oh, yeah, Maxie had two of those. And then Maxie had another one last night and started doing the math. There you go. Yeah. Wow. You're almost good at, as good at math as Tyrese Maxie is. When he saw going into the fourth quarter, they were down seven. And he said to himself, if we score eight, if we outscore them by eight this quarter, we're going to win. That's a good point. I think he stole John Kincaid's calculator on that one.
But great night by Tyrese Maxey. And here's the question. A lot on the table. We threw it all out there. Every team, every sport, whatever you want to talk about, 610-632-0975. But here's the question, and I want the two of you to think about this during the break. First question of the day that I want everybody to chime in on. In light of Caitlin Clark, your Iowa Hawkeye leading scorer, Division I all-time, who's the best athlete in your life that you just couldn't stand and why? There's probably a myriad of answers out there. What's yours? What's yours? Who's the athlete that was just phenomenal that you could not stand and why? Because uh, Caitlin Clark, for all the good that she did for women's college basketball, there was some stank being put on her this weekend. I was wondering if it was jealousy a little bit. I don't know what it was, but we'll talk about that. We'll talk about a whole lot more. Long way to go here. Morning show, midday, or I'm sorry, midday. Bob Cooney, 97.5 The Fanatic. Fanatic Sports Update. Sixers sweep the weekend. I'm Ray Dunn. This update is brought to you by InvisibleFence.com. Don't get stuck gearing up for spring while everyone else is enjoying the warm weather. Invisible Fence brand works in any season, giving your pet the freedom they deserve. Now visit InvisibleFence.com to learn more. The 76ers won a double overtime thriller over the Spurs, 133-126 yesterday. Joel Embiid, Tyrese Mack, oh, excuse me, allowing Tobias Harris and Kyle Lowry all did not play. Tyrese Maxey, he scored a career-high 52 points, his third 50-point game of this season. The Sixers swept the road back-to-back -back of the Grizzlies and Spurs, and with that, they now are seventh in the Eastern Conference. They return to the court Tuesday night against the Pistons. Live call that game, of course, will be right here on 97.5 The Fanatic. The Phillies fell in their series finale three to two to the washington nationals on sunday phillies took two of three from the nationals but lost on sunday as the bats went silent two for two through six in your lineup goes one for 17 from the plate christopher sanchez not as sharp as he was in his first start of the season four to third allowed three earned walked three batters to go along with allowing six hits the phillies get back to action in st louis tonight against the cardinals spencer turnbull on the mound that's a 740 first pitch as for the Flyers, their collapse appears to be imminent. They've lost their seventh straight game on Saturday, 6-2 to, to the Columbus Blue Jackets. They've fallen out of a playoff spot. Flyers radio voice Tim Saunders joins the show at 11 to talk about them. And the Union won 2-1 to one over Nashville, last unbeaten team in the MLS. I'm Ray Dunn reminding you the NCAA men's championship basketball game between Purdue and UConn is live tonight on 97.5 The Fanatic. Purdue and the University of Connecticut. The NCAA Men's Basketball Championship live from Phoenix. Coverage starts tonight at 7.30. Another sports exclusive from Philadelphia Sports Station for breaking news. 97.5, The Fanatic. Hey, tonight might be bittersweet because it's the end of the tournament, but FanDuel, in partnership with Valley Forge, lets you make it a little bit sweeter. Whether you're betting on the favorite or underdog, it's time to go dancing on America's number one sports book. Because right now, new customers get $200 in bonus bets if your first $5 bet wins. Real simple. Find something you like tonight between Purdue and Connecticut. Maybe it's an over-under for point total. Or maybe it's the line in general. But whatever it is, whatever you're real confident on, just put down $5 and you got a chance to win $200. That's 200 bucks to use on point spreads, money lines, or anything else that catches your eye. Just visit FanDuel.com slash Bob. That's FanDuel.com slash Bob. And bet on college hoops until they cut down the nets. 21. Ten first deposit required. Bonus issued as non-withdrawable bonus bets. It expires seven days after receipt. See terms at Sportsbook.FanDuel.com. If you have a gambling problem, call 1-800-GAMBLER. April's here, and the springtime weather's arrived. So you want to be able to have your windows open on the nice days and to be able to seal them up when that hot weather comes in the summer ahead. So talk to my friends, the experts at Window Nation. Because right now, for every two windows you buy, you're going to get two windows free, and there's no limit about how much you could save there. Plus, save even more with no interest or payments for 24 months. Window Nation's windows come with a lifetime warranty. They can be installed in one day or less. So with proven quality and service, when you're buying from Window Nation, you can rest assured. Assured, you're going to be getting affordable windows that meet or beat the ones from the national brand names. So don't miss out. It's a great chance for you to afford quality windows with an unlimited buy two, get two free, plus zero interest or payments for 24 months. You cannot afford to wait. It's easy. All you have to do is do your window shopping online at windownation.com. Then call them for your free no obligation quote at 866-90-NATION. That's 866-90-NATION. Tell them John Kincaid sent you. Business. 
It's all the things that keep this world turning. And behind every one of these companies is a partner helping to keep it all moving. It's why the local flower shop and your favorite pizza joint, the startup in the stadium, hospitals and hotels, banks and restaurants nationwide, all choose the advanced network, cybersecurity solutions, and round-the-clock trusted partnership from Comcast Business, the company that powers more businesses than anyone else. Comcast Business, powering possibilities. See why Comcast Business powers more small businesses than anyone else. Get started with fast speeds and advanced security for $49.99 a month for 12 months with a one-year contract. Plus, ask how to get up to an $800 prepaid car with a qualifying gig bundle. Don't wait. Call 1-800-501-6000 or go online to ComcastBusiness.com to switch today. Ends 5624. Restrictions apply. New customers only with 50 megabits per second internet and security edge. Eco bill and auto pay required. Equipment, taxes, and fees extra. After 12 months, regular rates apply. Ricky Bo here, and buying MLB tickets just got simple. Game Time, an authorized ticket marketplace of Major League Baseball, makes getting tickets fast and easy. Have you ever wanted to get to the game, but the ticket prices were just insane, or you can't find tickets anywhere? Guys, the app is amazing. With killer last-minute deals, all-in prices, and views from your seat, Game Time takes the guesswork out of buying MLB tickets or tickets to any kind of event. Plus, the game time lowest price guarantee. Yeah, you heard me. If you find tickets in the same section and row for less, Game Time will credit you 110% of the difference. It's a no-brainer. Take the guesswork out of buying tickets. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use code FASTBALL for $20 off your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create an account and use code F-A-S-T-B-A-L-L for $20 off. Go to GameTime.co, no M, or download the Game Time app today. Last-minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. eBay Motors is here for the ride. Go ahead, feel your engine. Admire that perfectly installed exhaust. Your vehicle's moving along this freeway like it was made from fresh installs and a whole lot of love. With eBay Motors, you get over 122 million parts to keep it running. And with eBay Guaranteed Fit, they'll be the perfect fit every time. Plus, at these prices, well, we're burning rubber, not cash. Keep your ride or die alive at ebaymotors.com. Eligible items only. Exclusions apply. Oh, 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 O'Reilly. Check engine light on. Take the guesswork out of your check engine light with O'Reilly Veriscan. It's free and provides a report with solutions based on over 650 million vehicle scans verified by ASE certified master technicians. And if you need help, we can recommend a shop for you. Ask for O'Reilly Veriscan today. Oh, 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 O'Reilly Auto Parts. Is this house a good price compared to others in the area? Are prices going up or down? If I don't make an offer right this very moment, will I miss my chance? These are just some of the questions a home buyer might ask. And these are the sorts of questions an agent who is a Realtor can help answer. Because Realtors have the expertise, data, and access to specialty training to help you navigate the process of buying a home. They provide support, guidance, and have your back every step of the way. That's what Realtors do, because that's who we are. Realtors are members of the National Association of Realtors. Hello. May I talk to my lawyer? Unfortunately, he's out on the golf course. I mean, in court. Can I take a message? Another message. Is he using these as scorecards? Just call Rand and Mike Spear already. Rand and Mike will treat you like family. Not to mention they've won over three quarters of a billion dollars for their clients. Uh, hello? Should I be writing this down? Nope. We're done here. Here. Now dial 1-800-90-LEGAL or start your injury claim online by visiting randspear.com. This is Philadelphia Station for breaking sports news. Powered by Lundy Law, your injury lawyers. Visit LundyLaw.com. That's LundyLaw.com. 97.5 The Fanatic and 97.5 The Fanatic.com. Coming up at 2, the best show ever with Tyrone Johnson, Ricky Vitalico, and Jen Scordo. Right now, it's Bob Cooney, 97.5 The Fanatic and 97.5 The Fanatic.com. Welcome back. So glad you're with us on this. It is a beautiful Monday morning. Not, not a cloud in the sky when I was driving in today. There's going to be something in the sky later on today. What time is that? Like 3.30 is the eclipse, Bill? Is that what it is? I think it starts a little early, but earlier than that. But then this is going to be the... <laughs> Bob's putting on his solar eclipse glasses right I now. I got him. Dylan McKinnon gave them to me. Can you see anything in the studio, Bob? I can't. But I forgot my contacts today, too, so I can't see much else anyway but they look good on you yeah i i can rock these 
they look pretty cool. So there was talk today about some schools having off or schools having half day. Good. Good for them. Letting the kids go out and experience what an eclipse is. Ray, you're 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 a little afraid of this thing, huh? You you don't you're you're an eclipse scares you is the word I was getting through the studio today. That's an interesting way that that was phrased. I, I don't think it scares me. I think I'm just you know I know I'm going to be competing with the eclipse for attention, and I think that's a, a problem for me. Because you are going to be grooming the youth of this country a, at that time. Horrible, horrible phrasing. Please, I'm teaching the youth of America. Let's let's go with that. Horrible it's combative phrase. again today, Bill. I got to take these off. It's making me dizzy not being able to see anything. How's that making you dizzy? He's combative. I don't know, Ray. Why are you Why are you coming after me? I don't he know. He did this on Friday too, Bill. It was a little uncomfortable. I, I you know, I, I tried to get him over, whatever. But he's become very combative in the in the. We're getting on four weeks now. This is this is week four. Yeah. Yeah. I sent a three week recap. I mean, like fun stuff. Yeah, he did, and and you were very nice in that. I guess yeah. to the bosses, you know, everything's oh, great. Oh yeah. But then it's you and I get thing. together, and there's friction. Bob, That's was, the only way I can term it is friction. There is no friction here. Okay, Bill, you're going to see it firsthand as you're with us. What are you with us, today, tomorrow, and Thursday? That's correct. How about that? And then Friday, to give you a, a look at the show, Friday we're going to be out at the Sixers practice facility over in Camden as they uh, unveil. Or no, that's, what is that, Thursday or Friday? That that's is Friday. Friday. Okay. My days are all mixed up. So they're going to unveil the Allen Iverson statue over there on Friday, and we're going to be out there with them as they do it. So I'm sure we'll get some really good Sixers guests. Hopefully we'll get uh, one AI to come on with us. Now, do you think that is the definition of irony that you're putting an Allen Iverson statue in front of the practice facility? <laughs> Bill brings up a good point. Bill brings up a really good point. Where They, they should have that one at the Wells Fargo Center, I would say. Huh? 100%. I think he deserves a statue, but put it at the Wells Fargo at a game. At a game, not a practice. I got to say, if I was still in that, uh, maybe it'll be the first question we ask him. Alan, what do you think, man? Yeah, they're putting a statue of it. He'll probably say, yeah, that's because that's how much I gave. I stood still at practice the <laughs> whole time, something like that. But interesting topic there. So I'll, I'll ask you two guys the question that I put out there. And if you want to chime in, 610-632-0975. You can call us. You can text us. Whatever you want to do. Who is the best athlete? In your guy's lifetime that you just couldn't stand? Bill, I'll start with you. So this is an interesting question for me because there was one that I could not stand, but my hatred slowly turned to respect, and that's Tom Brady. I Ooh. could not stand Tom Brady when he was with the New England Patriots, winning those Super Bowls. In fact, I did a cardinal sin as an Eagles fan in 2007 when they had that undefeated season, I rooted for the Giants in the Super Bowl because I Ooh. didn't want to see Tom Brady win a Super Bowl. Well, after the clock struck zero and I saw Eli Manning holding up the trophy, I said, what the heck did I just do? <laughs> but I've grown to respect Tom Brady and respect his greatness. So my hatred when I was in college grew to actually admiration and respect for Tom Brady. So that's my answer. Hmm. Tom Brady. Probably a popular answer here in Philadelphia. Yeah, such a popular answer. That's what I came in with today as well. Is it really? I, yeah, I can't stand him. Do you still guy. hate him? I can't stand him. I, I'm going to hate him on TV so much. I can already tell. I just don't like him. Do you have any respect, though, for his greatness? Uh, yeah, yeah. Great. You had a great career. Wonderful. Go. Whole thing. Yeah, I can't stand him. Can't stand him. So, mine, I had a similar situation as Bill when I was, I was younger, real young, though, and that was Larry Bird. Couldn't stand him. Celtics couldn't stand him. And then as I grew older and watched him, he became my non, my favorite non-Sixers player of all time because I appreciated it. And the Larry Bird, Magic Johnson rivalry was pretty cool to watch. I was too young. I don't remember any yeah, of that. But. Yeah, it was. That was. It was really special. I remember. I still remember what I did the day that they faced off in the championship. I was like, 11 years old, I went over to the courts behind my house where I played basketball all the time. I was singing the theme song that night. This is it. Was the theme song for Magic versus Larry Bird, Michigan State versus uh, Indiana State. And I just sat there and shot and shot and shot and acted like I was Larry Bird and then tried to dribble and do all the things like and look away passes to myself uh, by Magic Johnson and stuff like that. But I still remember that championship game. And I remember it being such a letdown. Bird awesome. didn't play well. Indiana State kind of got thumped. Uh, you know, magic was great, 
But, uh, it, yeah. It was cool that it started in college and then transitioned into the NBA with the Lakers being as good as they were, the Celtics being as good as they were. So it was really cool. It started at the NCAA championship. And Red Auerbach was a genius back then because he drafted Larry Bird his junior year before he even came out. So he drafted him one year, didn't even have him play for a full year because he finished his career at Indiana State before he came out and played for the Celtics. So a little stroke of genius, which we don't like to bestow upon anybody that has anything to do with the Boston Celtics. But I'll say my most recent one, great player that I just hate, it's still there. And this uh, everybody and probably listening has this guy also, uh, Sidney Crosby. That's where I was going. That's exactly where I yeah. was going, man. I just, I just can't. I well, can't. Do you remember, I guess we're going back some time now where after the game he was asked about the Flyers fans. I just don't like him. I just don't like him. Yeah. He so, was asked about Claude Giroux. Yeah, he didn't like him. Didn't like him. Yeah. Well, that was the best, that that playoff game where Giroux won at the first shift. Yep. Lights up Crosby, then scores the goal. Wells Fargo Center's going wild. I was hoping we were going to get playoff hockey this year, Bob, but not looking that way. Yeah, it's not looking that way. And we're going to talk to uh, Tim Saunders at 11 o'clock, uh, Flyers play-by-play -play man for this very radio station. Uh, we'll talk to Timmy at 11. Uh, we have to text him to, you know, he's one of those he's one of those hockey guys. Yo, Bob, don't if you don't mind, shoot me a text about 15 minutes before so I remember. I said, oh, thanks, Tim. I'm, I'm glad I'm so, you know, such an afterthought in your life that you can't remember to come on with us at 11 o'clock. But that's what we do. So that's a question we're throwing out to you today. Who is the greatest athlete that you just couldn't stand? And, Ray, we have some on the text board. Oh, yeah. You went Sidney Crosby, and you beat a couple of people to the punch here because we had Alfie check in, does not like Sidney Crosby. Uh, JT from Taconi also does not like Sidney Crosby. Another one from the hockey world, Scott Stevens. Oh, yeah. Was one that came across. We do not have a name on this person, but they texted it. They don't like Scott Stevens. And so far, Joey from Downingtown and another unnamed texter, both going with Deion Sanders. Oh. That's not bad. I understand it. Like, Dion isn't for everybody, and that includes now coaching at Colorado. He's not for everybody. But, I mean, we had this argument on the morning show before. What he's doing at Colorado is simply amazing. Yeah. And it's not about wins and losses right away for people that, you know, can sit back and realize that. It's about putting the program back on the map. My God, has he done it twofold, tenfold since he's been there. But as a player... I didn't have that hate for him. No, I, I always kind of liked him. I always kind of liked his yeah. trash talk and his dance down the sidelines. But I do agree with the Scott Stevens one because I will never forget the 2000 Eastern Conference Finals. Eric Lindros comes back for that game seven. He's skating across the blue line with his head down, and Scott Stevens lights him up. He already had the concussion problems, and that really was the beginning of the end. For Eric Lindros as a Philadelphia Flyer. Oh, we were in the Daily News offices at the time, Eddie Barkowitz and I. We were putting the paper out that Friday night, and we're sitting watching, and boom, it happens. And I turned to Eddie, and I said, we're never going to see him in a Flyers uniform again. And that was, that that hurt, because he had such potential. And oh, he's a Hall of Famer. So did he reach his potential? I guess. But did they reach the expectations, the Flyers and him, that many had? I used to... I don't know if you remember. You probably do. I know Ray doesn't remember this, but they used to practice at the Coliseum over in Voorhees. Oh, yeah, absolutely. And on certain days when we'd be off from school, my mom would drop me and my cousins off early in the morning. We'd wait in the parking lot until the players would show up. We knew all their cars. We'd get their autographs. And we were doing that right when they signed Eric Lindros. He came up from the Oshawa Generals. So that's when I grew up loving the Philadelphia Flyers. And I always thought we'd see him hold up the Stanley Cup one day. And it just never happened, Bob. Yeah, no, it didn't. And they get to a finals, obviously, against Detroit and get swept there. Uh, but after that, it, it just, like, never seemed to happen. Scott Stevens is a good one. Uh, I'm trying to think of my uh, – trying to go sport by sport. Most hated guy that was really, really good. Barry Bonds will probably come up there. Uh, I, I really appreciate it. But the hate isn't – has nothing – They, I don't even know what the hate is I have for him. What, that he cheated the game? that he cheated himself along with everybody else that was cheating at that time. I don't know. Uh, there has to be some Braves players in there simply because they always beat up on the Phillies. It's got to be somebody. Yeah, I'm trying to think, too, of the hatred for baseball. So baseball, for some reason, doesn't spark that hate in me like hockey did because yeah. hockey, they can get under the skin of the fans and the, and the opposing team, football the same way. But baseball, I, I never was a big fan of uh, David Wright. For whatever reason. Oh, okay. Well, there's probably a lot of Mets players, too. Yeah. 
Hey, like, uh, who's the, uh, uh, who's, um, Alfonso? Pete Alfonso, I can't stand. Alonzo. Alonzo. What did I say? Alfonso? Alfonso. Alfonso. Alfonso, yeah. I can't stand Pete Alonzo. Like, the, the, and what does it stem from? The home run hitting contest, lifting in front of the cameras before it's his time at bat. Nah, uh, I'm all right with that. There's probably some other ones throughout the years that will come to mind that we'll, we'll keep bringing up throughout the day. But it is Eclipse Day. Eclipse Day. Does it excite you at all? Ray, I had to remind you about it this morning. You forgot because of all the uh, otherly, other world endeavors that you have going on. Uh, I want to say hi to our, our uh, YouTube family. I got somebody's coming after me saying that I'm a, I'm a Tyrese Maxey hater. Oh? I don't recall. And then I think they said something about you said he wasn't a number two. No, I, I, I said what I said was, and I'm, I'm glad you brought it up. I'm sorry. I don't have who it was. What I said was at the time when, when Embiid got hurt, awfully hard for somebody at that position to carry a team, like in scoring or just carry them to wins and all that. I think it was pretty evident by the fact they went like 11 and, and 22 or something without Embiid. I, I have nothing against I love Tyrese Maxey. I don't think he's – he's not a player you build around. Or you, I'm sorry. He's not a – yeah. It's a, it's a player you build with. Like, I don't think he's a number one on anybody's team that you say, oh, we can win with him and then we'll build around him. No, I think he's, he's a great part of the pieces that you have here. Joe Embiid's your number one. He's a great number two. I, I don't think that's a put-down to him to say, I don't think he's the type of guy that can carry a team when Joel Embiid is out. Maybe not for an entire season, but we saw him carry that team last night. Sure he did. That was that was awesome. And nah, So, yeah, I, I if you think I'm an, uh, a Tyrese Maxey hater, I, I just don't think that's the case. But whatever it is. So, listen, we got Tim Saunders joining us at 11 o'clock. We'll talk about the Flyers. I, I have some serious questions, and I'll pose it out to you guys. Could this season have gone any worse? In all honesty, could it have gone worse? Because we know what it was supposed to be about. Then it wasn't about that. And now we're going to try to say, yeah, but? I don't know if we can do that. So we'll talk about that with Tim Saunders. Bill Calarulo's here with us. We're going to hit on that when we get back from this break. This is Middays. Bob Cooney, 97.5 The Fanatic. The best show ever. Opinion and conversation on Philly's hot sports topics. Tyrone Johnson, Ricky Vitalico, and Jennifer Scordo. This afternoon at 2, 97.5 The Fanatic and 97.5TheFanatic.com. The IRS finally caught up with Louie. I hadn't paid my taxes in eight years. I owe the IRS a lot of money. Louie was in deep trouble. We're going to take your house, put a lien on your bank account, uh, garnish your pay. They don't care. They're going to take your paycheck. Louie found out about Optima Tax Relief, the leading tax resolution firm. A-plus rated by the Better Business Bureau, they've resolved over $1 billion for their clients. Optima Tax, they helped me. They calmed me down. They made me feel comfortable, and I trust them. Louie has a lot to be thankful for. I don't owe the IRS anymore, and I'm able to live a comfortable life, <laughs> a lot better life. It was because of Optima Tax. For tax help you can trust, call Optima now for a free consultation. Take it from Louie. If you owe the IRS, don't go in alone. Give Optima Tax a call. They can help you. Call 800-354-2840. 800-354-2840. Optima Tax Relief. Testimonial from an actual client. Some restrictions apply. For complete details, please visit OptimaTaxRelief.com. Guys, if you can't get up for practice, let alone the big game, it's time to check out the scouting report.
station for breaking news. Now, more with Bob Cooney, 97.5 The Fanatic and 97.5thefanatic.com. Welcome back. Thanks for joining us middays. Bob Cooney, we got Bill Calarulo here joining us today, all day. Love that. Ray Dunn, your grumpy producer, is here. I don't understand where you're getting this from. I'm in a great mood today. I know you are. Uh, look, you can be in a great mood and, and just maybe not towards... Oh, did you text the person that I asked you to text? By any chance? No. Okay. That's no. an no. easy answer. I don't know why you're... Uh, um, no. okay. you were, I think you were baiting me to get a little combative there. No, I wasn't. I was asking an honest question. I know I should, probably shouldn't do it on the airwaves, but um, I will. I will <laughs> do that right now. To make sure that he is awake, yeah, so alert. We'll, while you're doing that, we got alive. some answers. Go ahead. Do you have any more uh, text there yeah, about well, our question? A lot of text here. A lot of people want to check in about this. We've gotten a couple of LeBron Jameses. People not liking LeBron James. I thought that might be an, a pretty popular answer. Yeah, I never got that way with him. Like I went after the decision. I had the you know I was so young. I was kind of influenced by the oh yeah how could, and then I was like okay they formed a big three. There's been big threes before. They'll be big threes again. You know. I hated that. I don't know your feelings on it, Bill, but when he made that announcement, did you care? Did it did it stir up any emotions in you? I didn't get overly angry about it, but I looked at it and said, eh, really not the, the most, especially because he was leaving Cleveland where he grew up. It just was weird to do, in my opinion, to have a whole announcement of I'm taking my talents to South Beach. I, can't I think he realized that. that it was too much. Yeah, yeah. I, I, think, I think the self-awareness is now there with that one. Yeah, because he didn't. He never. He didn't do it again. No. Whenever you. No, he did leave Cleveland like, again. But he didn't make. Yeah, a I know. Big thing out of it. Uh, also, we got Alex Rodriguez checking in. A couple people not Ooh. not big fans. A Rod did, did you Jeter say that, Bill? also came in there. I I saw the text. I okay. cheated. I said, "Oh, Alex Rodriguez is a good one." That is a really good one, Ray. Yeah. Yeah, I like that a lot. And there's someone here that that probably should have been my answer once you went Tom Brady. It's a number another number twelve that I can't stand that plays quarterback. Uh, Randall Cunningham. No. no. Uh, he doesn't, Aaron Rodgers. He doesn't wear 12 anymore, but yeah, Rodgers, Rodgers has quickly become one that I can't stand. Wow. A lot of people don't like Rodgers. I still, like, I still love watching him play. I don't, I, I don't, yeah, I mean, I didn't yeah. get a chance to watch him this year. No, but. no, not, not many people. You didn't see the four plays? No, I actually, it's funny. I went to go meet, it's, it was a Monday night. I went to go meet my friend for our Monday night standing uh, drinks, and I got there too late. I got there. I was like, where's Rodgers? Oh. He's like, you didn't see? It's like, no, I was walking down here. I wasn't, you know, on my phone. I wasn't looking what happened. I literally didn't get to see Rodgers in a Jets uniform because I got there late that Monday night. See, so, I appreciate something he does, Bill. He meets a friend every Monday night for drinks. You see? You're too hard on him. Ray, I'm going to be your I'm gonna be your protector. In you this think room. that's what it is? I'm, I'm too hard on him? I, I, I don't know. He no, just... I, I, think, I think it's proper. You know, he's trying to he's, – it's early on in the show. You know, he's not going full torts so, on me, but he, he's, he's trying to, you know – I was, me. I was just going to go there, Ray, is with John Tortorella. See, Bob knows you're a guy who could take hard coaching. I'm not sure John Tortorella read the room the right way. His group of men with the Flyers, he thought being overly aggressive, he thought calling them out in press conferences was going to work. It didn't work. But with Ray, I think Bob knows he can coach you hard. I think he can take it. Uh, sometimes, yeah, if he doesn't take it properly, there has to be words. Also, I'm so glad you did something, Bill. I cannot say something that Ray just said. I will never, ever. I, I don't know why it makes my ears bleed when I hear it. I cannot stand when non-players are ever called John Tortorella torts. I can't. Like, Tim Saunders will come on. If he calls him torts, fine. He's around them all the time, blah, blah, blah. I, I can't. You forget I can't that do the nickname. Torts and I became best friends at the oh, Flyers Carnival. That's true. That is true. <laughs> what does he call you? Ray. Oh, okay. Yeah. Oh, so he knows your name. Yeah, he does. Oh, and you know his name. Yeah. Okay. It's funny how that works. Story he for another know day. My name. Billy in South Philly, you're on 97.5 The Fanatic. What's up, Bill? Um, I just, uh, you know, I was a big Lindros guy, too. That, that was for me. That was, everybody remembers the Scott Stevens thing, but I'll take it back a year or two earlier for the first concussion, Darius Casparitis. Oh, oh that's a good name. Scott bounced his head off the ice, and then high-fived all the other guys on the bench after he did it. Oh, I hated Casparitis. That's a great one, Billy. Darius, hey. Billy, what's the reason for the Flyers' uh, failure here at the end of the season? I, I, man, I, I don't even know what to tell you. I've been watching them since 86. 
I can't. Tell. They're gonna they're gonna win the cup six months after I'm dead. I'm never gonna see a Stanley Cup. I don't know what to tell you, man. Well, I, I hope don't they know never do. If it's gonna anymore. be six months after your death, Billy. <laughs> Thanks so much, buddy. Appreciate uh, it. I don't know why I lost him there. Uh, now, don't forget the question. A superstar or a really great play, the best athlete you've ever seen that you hated. I don't think anybody will say Darius Kasparaitis was one of the best athletes they ever saw, but no. that was a punk move. Yeah, he was a dirty player. He was really a dirty player, but he was the type of guy that, yeah, when he was on the other team, you hated him. If he was on your team, you probably loved him stirring the pot. There's another one since we're talking about hockey players. It was Matt Barnaby. Do you remember him? Oh, God, yeah. Hated Barnaby. Ty Domi, Matt, Bar Matt Barnaby. Yeah, those guys. Yeah. Oh. And that, Barnaby always had that smile on his exactly. face. Exactly. And I think we're going to get a lot of hockey players, like we were saying, because they could get under people's skin. Because yeah. you could do things after the whistle. You don't do that in basketball or football. There's not much done after the whistle like it is in hockey. I was surprised when I was a little kid that uh, I had a cousin that played um, played hockey at a uh, professional level. Uh, that that when he came down and told me, and I was a little kid at the time, that Bobby Clark was one of the most hated hockey players in the whole world. And I'm like, what are you talking about? He goes, yeah, you don't see it because you're a Flyers fan, but he's dirty as hell. Yeah, he was. And I was like, oh, cool. That's our guy. I like that. Alec and Ben Salem, you're on 97.5 The Fanatic. What's up, Alec? Hey, guys. How you doing this morning? Doing good. How about you? Good, good. Just wanted to check in, enjoy the show. Uh, Bill kind of enjoyed what you uh, brought to Across the stations to kind of just want to, uh, you know, say that. I oh, appreciate uh, that, man. Yeah, absolutely. So I thought I'd just kind of go around the city and then give you my most hated athletes. So uh, quickly, uh, pretty excited about the Sixers. Uh, I am disappointed about the Flyers. You know, I understand expectations versus kind of what's played out. And then with regards to the Phillies, just feels like the same team, base running errors, same guys. I don't know. Uh, they might need to switch it up. Um, as for my most hated athlete, uh, kind of a little bit of a local twist, right? But uh, Mike Vick, right? So uh, when he was at Virginia Tech, couldn't stand him, right? Then he gets picked up by Atlanta. Really good player, still couldn't stand him. And then obviously everything that happened off the field. Um, but then obviously he comes to the Eagles and he did so well kind of resurrecting his character. He led the Eagles, you know, then the 2010 playoffs and everything. So uh, I thought that was a decent one. No, that's really good, Alec. Thanks a lot. Appreciate that. I remember one of the greatest runs I ever saw was Mike Vick when he was at Virginia Tech. I guess it was at the Vet against Temple. And it was a, like, a quarterback kind of draw or something. I've never seen anybody run faster on a football field. The things he used to do. Do you remember that commercial, the Mike Vick experience commercial? That was yeah, a yeah, really yeah. cool commercial but i remember i was working for the eagles at the time when the actually i wasn't working for the eagles but i was down on the sidelines i forget why i was on the sidelines but anyway you were suited up ready to I, go I, play I was on the sidelines I, I hadn't yet started working for them but i was on the field and it was the nfc championship game when atlanta came here that's the big hit brian yeah. dawkins had on algae crumpler yep. but i remember some of the players on the field saying they're not going to be able to beat Vic next week because it was I was there for the game before that they're not going to be able to beat Vic next week he was just that good and seeing him up close was amazing but Jim Johnson being the defensive coordinator he was figured out a way to slow him down which wasn't easy before he you know he came back he had a little bit of a return with the Eagles but he was never the same guy he was in Atlanta he was t unbelievable yeah all right we got all that and more talking about the most hated star players that that you came across your lifetime 11 o'clock we're going to talk to Tim Saunders we're efforting, although I hate that, Adam Joseph, because I want him to come on and talk about the Eclipse, because I'm enamored with the Eclipse. All that and more middays, Bob Cooney, 97.5 The Fanatic.
The best show ever with Tyrone Johnson, Ricky Vitalico, and Jens Gordo. Right now, it's Bob Cooney, 97.5 The Fanatic, and 97.5TheFanatic.com. Bob Cooney and Bill Calarulo today as he joins us in studio. Very excited about that. Ray Dunn producing. Should you call? Sylvana's back there taking your phone calls. And if she answers, make sure you wish her a happy birthday, as it was yesterday. But not a lot of people are up and around on Sundays. So uh, wish it to her today if you get a chance. All right, we're going to go right to the Comcast Business Hotline because we got a friend on the phone here. Last night I texted, and he said, even though Pat Egan isn't there, I'll still come on with you anyway, Bob. Tim Saunders from your great Flyers broadcast. Tim, how are you today, buddy? Tim Saunders, there he is. My fault. How are you, Tim? I'm good, Bobby. What I said was I'll come on because Pat's not there. Yeah, you and Pat have like a love-hate relationship. I think you'd love to hate him. No, he loves me and I hate him. <laughs> good way of putting no. it. <laughs> Pat is the best. I, 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 love, I love him because uh, when we're in a room together, I'm not the shortest guy. <laughs> oh, man, Pat is the best. So, Tim, what's going on with this team right now? I have said it all year long. John Tortorella intrigues me. It's the word that I've labeled on him. I understand a lot of the places he's coming from. I covered the Sixers during their process, so I kind of know the ins and outs of what it takes when you're rebuilding. But what's going on with this team right now? Are we just seeing what they really are over these last 10 games, or is it something more, Tim? Well, Bob, first of all, let me congratulate you on the new show. You're going to do great. Oh, I thank love you, buddy. Um where are we at this point? You know, everybody's burying this team, and there are four games left, and I hate to be, you know, the company guy that says, hey, don't don't write the obituary prematurely. Has it been bad the last couple of weeks? It's been horrific. They've picked the absolute worst time to go into their worst slump of the year. It's a combination of goaltending, lack of finish, lousy luck, uh, you know, whatever. Uh, the one thing they this team's been able to do, and, and, you know, this sounds so ridiculous. I think sometimes you talk about how close-knit this team is and how close the room is, but these are the times that that's most important because when a team goes in the crapper and they oftentimes start pointing at each other and start bickering, then you know you're done. But this team isn't doing any of that. They've stayed together. And I'm going to trust that they can figure this out in the next four games. At least I'm hopeful. A lot of us were hoping that at the trade deadline, the Flyers didn't come complete sellers because we wanted to see them make this playoff push. But they did trade Sean Walker. How big of a loss has that been for this Flyers team? Well, it's been huge um, because on the same day or the next day, they lose Nick Seavers. So what had been surprisingly one of the best second D pair in the league suddenly are out of your lineup and and that's been a huge problem it was a huge hurdle to overcome cedar's back he is you know he epitomizes what they want to what they want to build here but walker was one of the most pleasant surprises around the league i didn't disagree with the move to 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 uh, maximize the asset he was he's on an expiring contract they taught contract with them, kind of came to the conclusion that they weren't talking about the same kind of money or term that he was. And so at that point, you got to manage the asset and get something back for him. So the fact that they moved him, I had no problem with that. It was just unfortunate that they also bought Nick Cedar at the same time. Tim, with with the goings on of what's happening, and and you know, we I said it on the sh- on the morning show actually, probably a month or so ago. I said, stop talking about the Flyers in the playoffs because they're going to make it. That that's where I was. I thought this team was definitely a playoff team, and as you said, they still could be. But if not, has this season got at, gotten out of it what it needed to be gotten out of it, even if they should not make the playoffs after the kind of year they've had. No, I, I understand the question, and it's a, a good point. And we were making it from the very start, from the very get-go. This team, and, and again, I'm going back to opening night, we were saying this team could miss the playoffs and still take huge steps forward in, I hate to word, use that word process, but you already used it. Uh, that's kind of what they're doing here, and they have made huge inroads. Uh, were they playing over their heads? I don't know if I'd, I'd term it that way, but 
they proved to be a better team collectively than I think a lot of people gave them credit for. Uh, I, I still think that's the case. There are some really good pieces here. What you're seeing is a young team trying to figure out what it means to elevate your game at this time of the season, and some of these guys haven't been through this. Todd Fedorik, we were sitting at dinner the other night, and he, he pointed out that when he was a young player, he was surrounded by savvy veterans who had been through this before. There's not a lot of that in that dressing room, and I think that's probably the bigger problem. You mentioned there's a lot of good young pieces on this team. How excited should Flyers fans be about Tyson Forrester? Well, I, I, I think the most exciting thing about Forrester is that he does all the little things that sometimes it takes years to get into a, a young player's game. He's got a great shot, but he's responsible defensively, a, a hard stick. He, he does all the little things that you, as they say, sometimes spend years trying to teach guys. Uh, Noah Cates is another example. Last year, the, you could say the same thing about those two. Forrester's got a bigger offensive upside, so I think he's one of those guys that you can really be excited about. Owen Tippett, we, everybody knows about his, his great shot, and that's what makes him a potential 30-40 goal scorer uh, moving forward in his career, but it's his speed that I think is the most exciting. We've seen Morgan Frost become a really creative playmaker, but again, all these guys are trying to figure out how to do it in the regular season and then ramp it up at the end of the year and in the playoffs. These are valuable lessons, and right now it's been a little painful. So, Timmy, if, if like you look at it realistically, like you said, first game of the season, you knew the outlook for what the season was about. Okay, no matter how this ends, what's the next step for this team? What do you feel like, whether you're talking moves or whether you're talking just uh, mature, maturation, whatever you want to put it, what's the next step for this team? Well, I mean, if you're talking about things on the ice, I think, and I hate to, I'm not throwing anybody under the bus, I, uh, power play has really hurt them this year. Yeah. They've been last in the power play all season long and just have not created even momentum on their power play. If they had a, a middle-of-the-league power play, we wouldn't even be talking about whether they were going to be getting into the playoffs at this point. They've had a great penalty kill all year, but the power play has suffered. That's probably one area that they're going to look to. That's easier said than done because, you know, those snipers on the power play are hard to find, and you're not going to go out and find that guy. I think in some ways they're hoping Owen Tippett can be that guy. Uh, but, you know, the the – Alex Ovechkins or, or, or that type of player that sets up at the top of the circle and they just try to work it to him for the one-timers. The players don't have that guy yet. And, you know, like a lot of teams, they're looking for him. So we're asking the question today on the station about our most hated athletes of all time. And one of them that keeps coming up is Sidney Crosby. How the hell are the Pittsburgh Penguins and Sidney Crosby close to a playoff spot again? Because of Sidney Cross, he's almost <laughs> done it single-handedly. It's unbelievable. And and I know he's he's public enemy. Well, I said after the Cutter Gauthier thing, I said he was public enemy number two now, Crosby, uh, in Philadelphia. You love to hate the guy, but I think the Flyers uh, fan base is savvy enough to be able to recognize he's a great player, and he's one of the generational players that have, you know, come into this league in the last 50, 60, 70 years. I mean, he's that good. And he is, if the Penguins get in, it's going to be almost entirely because of Sidney Crosby. Yeah, we love to hate him, but you also sometimes have to recognize greatness. Timmy, I told you at the beginning of this conversation that my word for John Tortorella all year has been intriguing. That's, that's absolutely how I view it. If you had to pick a word, you're around him a lot, talk to him an awful lot, you see his handling of players, all of that. What would your word be to describe him for this season with the Flyers? Mm, well, but what I think of when I think of John Tortorella, more than any other coach I've ever witnessed or watched, is he is, in every sense of the word, a teacher. Uh, and not only on hockey, but I, I, I think just life lessons for young players. I still think he was the right coach at the right time, given what the Flyers needed to address two years ago, this year, maybe moving forward here in the next year or so. I, I, it, it, it's tough lessons. And, and does he wear on guys? Does that 
relentless message wear on guys? Yes, yeah, sometimes, but that's when you find out about certain players and, and what you have. You, sometimes you don't know what you have until you get a guy really in the heat of a, like now, a playoff race and see what they do with it. Um, I haven't disagreed with too many of his moves this year. Not that it matters what I agree or disagree with. Uh, I, I just think he's he, he, he's tough to take when you play for him sometimes, but almost without exception. Players that have gone through that and have come out the other end better all say he made me a better player. And those are the lessons he's trying to pull these guys through. Quick last question for you, Tim. Has this season, no matter what happens, has this season gone as well as could be expected? Well, under the circumstances, uh, I don't think, you know, they didn't anticipate uh, the goaltending uh, difficulties that they had to deal with after Carter Hart went away. Sam Erson was not expected to play as much as he's played and until just recently has been outstanding. Given that, I think, yeah, this has been a pretty positive year. Um, their record against the teams ahead of them in the playoffs or in the standings is the reason that they gave themselves a chance at the end of the year. I was really more concerned about the end of the season because for whatever reason, they haven't been quite as good against the the low standings team as they, as they have against the really good teams. So the good teams have brought out the best of them. They just got to figure out how to bring that same gear against the Montreal Canadiens, for instance, tomorrow night. Well, Tim, we appreciate you always listening to you covering Flyers games. You are the best. I will make sure I tell that, that little guy, Egan, you said hello. And we'll be checking in with you, hopefully during the playoff run. Hey, guys, good luck with the show. And uh, call me anytime. I love talking hockey with you. You're the man. Thanks so much, Tim. Tim Saunders joining us on the Comcast Business Hotline. I always love to, to get to try to find out what people that are around somebody that is such a talking point as John Tortorella is, I love to kind of get their insight. It's interesting, though, because if you listen to some of Tortorella's former players, like Tim Saunders just says, hey, a lot of the guys who have gone through it and come out on the other side love Tortorella. You look at Brandon Dubinsky, can't stand Torts. You look at Michael Delzato, says Tortorella is one of the most misunderstood men in hockey, wished he could have played his entire career for John Tortorella. So it really, some people love him, some people hate him. But you know what I love? You asked the question about is this end of the season a disaster or whatever, however you described it. John, Bob, it's April 8th, and we're sitting here with a Flyers guest talking hockey. I mean, yeah. to me, that's a success for the Flyers. Yeah, it is, and that's how you have to look at it. It really is. I mean, you can tell you went into, you went into the season not expecting anything. So if you look at it that way, it came about. I wonder a little bit, though, with this, you had a chance but you didn't get it, I hope the vision wasn't lost of what the original goal was, if you know what I'm saying. Yeah, and thankfully, at the trade deadline, I think they did stay true to the plan. They didn't go out and sell anything to try to get a piece to come in here that would help with the playoff push. They didn't overly sell either, only trading away Sean Walker, but I think they stayed true to the plan. Let's not go out, because one of the things I wanted to see them do with the deadline was, hey, get a better backup goalie. I didn't know Fedotov was in the mix. Yeah. I wanted to see them get a better backup, but hey, look, at the end of the day, we may be frustrated if they don't make the playoffs, but you can't look at this season as anything other than a success. We're here talking Flyers. The The buzz is back. If you've been in the building, the buzz is back for this team, and they do have a lot of young pieces, as Tim just told us. Yeah, and a tough weekend. They lost two in a row Friday and Saturday, and John Tortorella had some things to say after that loss to Columbus on Saturday. Oh, I don't think I don't think a lot of people playing their best hockey. Uh, I think there's some uh, some guys that uh, have found their way a little bit. Other guys are pressing, um, but you know you know what? It, it, it's it's a loss. Um, it's an ugly one. Uh, but we we just have to. We can't get discouraged. There's no no one's going to help us out of this. We can't get, and being discouraged isn't going to help it. We just got to try to stay positive. Uh, have a good practice day Monday. Get on a get on a flight and get back to work. That's not easy to do after seven losses in a row. But it's like Tim Saunders said, you know, it's life lessons. It's learning lessons. This team 
probably this whole year in John Tortorella's eyes before the season started and even getting into this playoff mix, it was all about lessons this year. And here's another one. This bothers me, Bob. This one, th th this post-game press conference by Torts bothered me because, look, I don't want to be too overly critical of John Tortorella because I do think this team overperformed this year. I think a lot of that was because of Tortorella. But he says now, a lot of guys are pressed. We can't get discouraged. We got to stay positive. Less than a week earlier, he was calling them an embarrassment to the sweater. He was saying guys didn't have a clue how to play. And now it's, hey, you can't get discouraged. Got to stay positive. Great point. You, you misread the room a week earlier. They didn't respond, and now you're trying to do a 180. That's where I think Tortorella missed. That's, that's a pretty good point. And I, I, I didn't understand the I, – I shouldn't say I didn't understand. I was intrigued by – because I'm not trying to cast judgment one way or the other – on this, not being around it, uh, you know, at all. I, I didn't understand some of the things he did earlier this year. I may have disagreed with them, but I'm I was trying to get the big picture. So all year long, you kind of take in all the evidence that he provides for you of, okay, what is this guy really about? How is he really handling this team? Over the last two weeks, there's been more questions to me than there has been answers, just like the one you brought up. And like I said, I don't want to be overly critical of Torts because – you heard Tim Saunders earlier. They are lacking a lot of veteran leadership on the team. But then at the same time, you took your one big veteran leader and you kind of stripped them of any leadership qualities when you said, hey, we're benching this guy. And I don't know. Couturier was asked about it. He didn't know why he was being benched. I just didn't like that move. It hasn't worked. I think they're 2-8 and eight or 2-7 and seven since they did that. I'm not, I'm not sure of the exact record, but. I, you know, I'm torn on this because I'm so grateful for the season they did have, but at the same time, yeah, the last couple of weeks, a lot of questions. Yeah, and you're right. You know, you know, what sucks about it is this, and it was a question that I put out there last week a little bit. D does this ending, does the fact that they had a play – look, they could have ended this year with – what do they have, three games to go, four games to go? Say they wind up with like 88 points, 85, 88 points, somewhere in there. You would have said, oh, man, that's a pretty decent season. They didn't make the playoffs. Well, that's all right. That's all they weren't supposed to anyway. If you went through the season like that, I think it's okay, great. Uh, Still, that's a positive thing. But the way but it the ended. fact that they got close and didn't make it, I hope it doesn't leave the players with questions in their minds more than it should have. Like, oh, man, we, we just didn't have it for a playoff run. We, we didn't have it. We fell apart at the end. Why did that happen? I hope it doesn't, you know, deter the season more than it should because of the ending if they don't wind up making the playoffs. And you just said it, if they don't make the playoffs. And I know there's still four games left, but if you look at it, even if they go three and one, Bob, it's it's going to be tough. I mean, it really is. They put themselves in a really tough spot now. Yeah, yeah. So we'll see how it all plays out with them. It's it's funny the ebbs and flows of sports, isn't it? Like three weeks ago, we're down on the Sixers because they're just not playing well. And Bede's out. Is he ever coming back? Flyers were playing well. Then it comes to this. And Bede comes back. Flyers start to sink. Sixers start to rise. It's the greatest thing about sports. I put a question out there to you earlier. I'm going to put another one to you when we get back from the break. And it has to do with a special event that's coming up today. Middays, Bob Cooney, 97.5 The Fanatic. Update. Sixers sweep the weekend. I'm Ray Dunn. This update is brought to you by Silk. Feel plenty good. Shop wherever you find groceries. Silk's delicious plant-based beverages help bring a daily dose of goodness to help you feel plenty good. They are rich in calcium and a good source of vitamins A and D to support the health of you and your family. Shop wherever you find groceries. The 76ers won a double overtime thriller over the Spurs. 133-126 yesterday. Joel Embiid, Tobias Harris, and Kyle Lowry all did not play the game. Tyrese Maxey, he played, and oh boy, did he play. 52 points, a career high for him, his third 50-point game of the season. Sixers swept the road back.
phenomenal. And you telling me some of the stuff that happened last night. Yeah, the storylines are great, but you do have to appreciate the athleticism. Oh, sure. So that, that's what I like about it as well. So, yeah, that wasn't the best thing of the weekend, but I know it was for a lot of wrestling fans. Oh, yeah. I mean, yeah. it's the Super Bowl. The Super Bowl was here. So. Yeah. I, I, I got a kick out of some people being interviewed uh, on Channel 6 or wherever and, and grown men all dressed up in, in tights and all that and, and just really getting into it. It was, it was kind of cool. So, Mariano from Argentina, we never – like to keep you hanging on, so we're going to you right away. Mariano, how are you, buddy? How are you guys? Thanks for taking my call. Absolutely. I Thanks for making thing. it. Yeah, I have a quick thing on the Flyers. Uh, we are the seventh lowest payroll in the NHL, and before the season started, I think Vegas was saying that the Flyers were going to be like the, between the seventh or eighth worst team in the NHL. So why... Why are we going mental on this guys and being so upset when at the beginning we all knew this was going to be a season with zero playoff expectations. This guy started playing so good that they got all the fans' hopes up, and I get it. When you see there's a good product in front of you, oh, man, these guys are actually good. We, we might have a chance to win something. But let's not forget that at the beginning of the season, the playoffs were not on the menu, you know? Yeah, I don't. I, I'll tell you, Mariano. Here, I think people are okay with that. I think, yeah, are people disappointed that they've lost seven in a row? And you know, it looks like the playoff dream is kind of flying away. But I think generally, people are okay with what's going on with this Flyers team this year. Yeah, I agree with you, Bob. I think a lot oh. of people are okay with it. Well, we're, what I think fans are upset with, Mariano, is that because they've been in such a drought. And the way the coach has responded to that, some of the things he said publicly, some of the things he's done by yep. benching Couturier, fans are now questioning, should that have been the approach? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And doesn't the same thing apply to Johan Rojas on the Phillies? Like, what are we expecting from this guy? We never really actually seen him put the barrel on the ball and hit well. So isn't, uh, like... Does, do you think the same thing applies here? Like, what, what? why are you actually expecting this guy to be good when we never really saw that that product you know, on display, you know? Yeah, thanks, Aaron. I appreciate your call once again. I, I uh, Look, I, I said at the beginning of the season, yeah, throw him out there. If you're worried about your nine-hole hitter in a lineup that is constructed the way the Phillies lineup is, you're worrying about the wrong thing. Here it is, nine games into the season. I don't think anybody's calling for it all that much. But when a guy's hitting 0-45 yeah. and you expected that or talked about that that can't happen, it's concerning at least. It's concerning, but it is only nine games. And, hey, Andrew on the morning show this morning saying, hey, send them down, right? He wants them, he wants them down. I don't agree with that yet. No, Andrew wants them here. Oh, no, no Andrew, I'm sorry, you're exactly right. Yeah. Andrew wants him gone, my fault, yeah. Andrew thinks he should be back down in AAA. I just think it's only been nine games. Yeah. And the thing is, is we know baseball is a game of failure. You've heard that old cliche. Let's give him a chance. I know he looks lost, but I think you got to give him a little bit more than nine games. If they send him down now, what type of message does that send to Rojas the next time you bring him up? Hey, you got nine games or you're out of here. Let's just be a little bit more patient. And like you said, we should be voicing our frustrations towards Nick Castellanos and Trey Turner right now, not Johan Rojas. Yeah, yeah, John Kincaid brought that up this morning, those exact words pretty much, that if, if Johan Rojas is getting your ire, then you really are misplaced in it. But uh, not the start he wanted, not the start fans wanted either. I'm, I'm not happy with light hitting left field and center field, which might be the case, although Marsh has shown some pop. Uh, but, again, the reluctance of Rob Thompson to play his left-handed hitters against left-handed pitchers, how much you know? How much time are you going to give Marsh off out there in left field? Whit Merrifield has to get some at-bats, so there's going to be times that you have him out there also. He's also not hitting, Bob. No. Uh, the whole team, nope. you know, it's, it's, it's a little bit disappointing. I thought they were breaking out of it this weekend, Friday and Saturday, and then yesterday they had the outing that they had. Yeah, Saturday was exactly what you want to see from this lineup. Turner hits a double. They intentionally walk Bryce Harper, and then JT Romuto steps up to the pay plate, makes him pay, hitting a three-run home run. That's what we want to see. Exactly. Sit. Exactly. You couldn't have said it any better. All right, Ray, our text people, we got some stuff about most hated athletes, a good player, but you just couldn't stand them. You have some more of them? Yeah, John checking in saying that he hated a Chipper Jones. 
Chipper's a good one. That is a good one. Yeah. What uh, La what was his real first name? Larry. Yeah. People right. they they used to chant it at the at the vet and all. Yeah, Larry, I think. I think Ray just said yes. He did. I know. I no, think it is. He thinks it is. But now it I'm gonna go I give think it, it is Larry. Give it a sec. Yeah, Larry Wayne. Yeah. Jones Jr. Yeah, Chipper Jones is a very good one. I was trying to think of a pitcher on that Braves team that I didn't like, but I, I didn't mind like Glavin and Smoltz and Maddox. and uh, Maddox. Like I didn't mind those guys. I don't know. I can't think of any more. What else we got, right? All right, Joey checking in saying he hates Ezekiel Elliott. Zeke. That's a good one. I'll tell you, you know what? It's because of the whole spoon feeding I himself. Stand that that yeah. always used to get people angry. But hey, did you see? There's uh, some reports that there could be a reunion between Ezekiel Elliott and the Dallas Cowboys, and I love it because it just goes to show how desperate the Cowboys are. He's coming off career lows in carries, yards per carry, touches, yards, all that stuff. So Dallas is desperate. Yeah, well, Jerry, last year when they got rid of him, I mean, he put a like that tearful goodbye of like, oh, my, I love that guy. I can't believe we're letting him go. It seemed like they were going to keep him forever. Uh, keep him with the Cowboys here. Uh, Jeremy, checking in with Michael Irvin. Michael Irvin was at one of the top of my list. I, the only reason I didn't put him there, because I didn't like the way Philadelphia fans reacted. No, I shouldn't say that. I don't like the story surrounding the way Philadelphia fans reacted. I still think more they were booing Deion Sanders for doing, like, the dance above him, like the healing dance or whatever the hell it was. You're talking about when Irvin got hurt? When Irvin yeah. got hurt, yeah. I don't think the fans were cheering that. Funny side note, one of my best friends in high school was the attending doctor that day on the sideline. And when was if you look at the highlights of it, he's standing right there with a big Notre Dame jacket on. Wow. How do you like that? Two well, more shout for out you. to Paul Kalecki. Okay, go ahead. Steph Curry? Oh, I don't know. <laughs> God, no. I think he might be one of the most beloved athletes around the country because you're not talking home team love. He might be one of the most beloved athletes in all of sports, I think, around the country. And I've grown to love him more because he's a good golfer, too. He's a phenomenal golfer. Yeah, I, I loved him when I was on the beat. I could not I could not miss his pregame warm-up. It was so much fun to watch. And you see now, like the other day, he did something where it just – Throws the ball up in the air from right under the basket. Throws it way up in the air. Swishes it home underhanded. You know, the shots from the tunnel, I used to stand right there and wait for him to come off so he'd shoot it right near me. Like, just phenomenal. No, I disagree with Steph Curry. All right. And the final one here, Mike and Lansdale saying Tim Tebow, but specifically the college one, who is good. Interesting. I, I, I never had hate for Tim Tebow. I think there are fans. I'm not one of them, but I think there are fans who just – got over the way Tebow would constantly be the, what is it what did they even call it, it wasn't Tebow mania that's Minshew mania it was the, Tebow time the Tebowing Tebow time what oh yeah Tebowing? the Tebowing yeah, and all that the, stuff yeah. And, but yeah he's a he's a good guy from everything you hear oh about. he runs a uh he runs a, a a a prom night for kids with disabilities I've seen that, that my son goes to every year so it is amazing that he does that a night to shine it's incredible uh, he and his wife do it, and they put out a, you know, uh, they put out something for everybody to see before these nights. And it's all over the country. So it's hard to dislike a guy like yeah, that. Yeah, no, I, I have a soft spot in my mind for Tim, in my heart for Tim Tebow. All right, here's what I wanted to put to you guys. I'll throw this question out there before we go to break. So today we're getting this eclipse thing, right? What is it? The sun's getting blocked, right, Ray? Yes. Yeah, we're not, we're not going to get totality here, but we're going to get close to it, I believe. I think I heard 80%, something like that. If there was a sporting event that you had to block out of your mind, just get rid of it forever, which one would it be? It could be a play. It could be a game. I don't know, maybe expand it to a series, whatever. But if you had something in the sporting world that you had to just block out of your mind, which one would it be? When we get back, I'm going to hit you guys up with that one. I'm also going to let everybody else who wants to chime in, allow them to chime in on that. Just a reminder, the 11 o'clock hour, it's brought to you by Golden Nugget Jewelers, where Philly gets engaged. Okay, when we get back. A lot more Sixers, Flyers, Phillies, Eagles talk coming up. Also, the question out there to you now. What is the sporting event, play, whatever, that, like an eclipse, you just want to totally block out of your mind? Midday Show's Bob Cooney, 97.5 The Fanatic. It's the final week of the NBA season, and you can feel the urgency. 
We have you covered on all things Sixers as they push to the playoffs. Extended pregame coverage, play-by-play -play with Tom McGinnis, and special post-game shows. Plus, listen all day for the latest updates on Embiid, Maxi, and the team. This is your home for the Philadelphia 76ers. 97.5 The Fanatic and 97.5TheFanatic.com. What's the number one reason most men don't seek medical help for their ED? Cost? Embarrassment? Or all the talk about needles and knives? At Forge Medical Group, we understand that nobody's a fan of sharp objects down there. That's why we offer focus wave therapy and radial shock wave therapy, which use acoustic pressure waves to open existing blood vessels and stimulate the growth of new ones with absolutely no cutting, slicing, TheFanatic.com Coming up at 2, the best show ever with Tyrone Johnson, Ricky Vitalico, and Jens Gordo. Right now, it's Bob Cooney, 97.5 The Fanatic and 97.5 TheFanatic.com Hey, thanks for hanging out with us on this beautiful 
Monday morning. We are about 11, 12, 1, 2, 3, about four hours away from the eclipse. Is that what you said, right? It's like 3.30ish, somewhere around there? I love the, the association you have with me in the eclipse. Oh, I asked you earlier, and you had an answer for me. That's, no, that's why not I... true. I think it was Haley that, that brought up the timing of it. No, I thought I asked you. I'm sorry. Do, uh, Ray, might you, again, combative. Do you know? I'm not did being I say combative. That on the air? I'm, I'm just sorry. clearing the air here. You, you go to me for all these eclipse answers. I, I'm just excited it's going to happen. You know, they got, they're blocking out the sun partially. It's going to be dark out at 3.30 in the afternoon. Allegedly 3.30, because that's the time that we were given earlier. Bill, do you know? I don't. I, okay. I really need to do a better job, because my daughter was asking me questions this morning. I was dropping her off at her grandmother's about the eclipse. I'm like, I don't really know, hon. I gotta, I gotta if only we had a way that we could find out. I'm going to rummage through the newspaper to see if I can find it. I'll bet you. All right, eclipse. Here's a story. I'm looking for a time. And for those of you not on YouTube, it. when he says rummaging through the newspaper, he's not scrolling online. Serious. He right, literally has it. a newspaper. I got this is courtesy of 6ABC's website. The partial eclipse will begin at 2.08 p.m. with the maximum eclipse at 3.23 p.m. and will end at 4.35 p.m. The whole thing will last around two and a half hours. Wow. Oh, cool. All right, so I'm going to go out. I'm going to go out back when I get home because I have to pick up my son, so I'll be home like 3.15. I should be okay 3.15, right? That's According to this, you'll get there right near the maximum eclipse. Look at that. I love it. All right, I'm, I'm in for an eclipse. I got. It's like you I don't can, think we have much of a choice at this point. You can crack open a, you know, a cold one to eclipse enjoy. Eclipse beer? Well, I guess. Rank right? your favorite beers. Where's okay. the eclipse beer? Oh, I, uh, I'll tell, talk to you about this off air. But, ah, oh, man, we had a... Uh, we had some peeps here from a brewing uh, that we that was our brewer of the week last That's week. That's right. Bonesaw Brewing Company. And so they were nice enough to drop off some of their items. And uh, I was lucky enough to, to grab some. And I didn't even realize I just grabbed it. It's, it's one, a beer that I've said is my favorite beer that I've had down there before. Uh, delicious. It's called Swoosh. If you get a chance to, to taste it, Swoosh. You're not a big IPAs man. I am. Oh, you are yeah. an IPAs man. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, you are an IPAs man. Right. I learn more about you all the time. What about you, Bill? You you more? I don't see you as much of a beer drinker. So that's you're spot on. I actually don't drink at all. I mean, I'll have a drink. It's not like I'm a you know recovering or anything like that. I just choose not to because I don't like the way it makes me feel the next day. I'm a little weird like that. I like to be able to wake up, exercise, do all that stuff. Maybe my maybe the listeners are like, man, who is this guy? But. Yeah, I don't really uh, drink a lot. Me and Bridget don't drink that often. I would say you're uh, people probably like to wake up feeling good. Yeah, so I think you're onto something there. Yeah, I don't like to uh, yeah. wake up hungover. Look, before before I hit 40, I could drink, like raise age, party, wake up the next day, be fine. Now it just takes me a while. Yeah. Well, you're getting to the ripe old age of 40, huh? <laughs> or you're past 40 now. Yeah. Getting, and he's getting married and stuff like that. This is just crazy times for Bill. Bill's got a lot of stuff coming up. We love it. All right, so the, what we have out there for you, because of the eclipse today, what's something that you just want to block out of your mind when it comes to sports? Bill, I will start with you as you are our guest today and tomorrow and Thursday. So what is your eclipsable moment? So maybe this is recency bias, but for me, it's Super Bowl 57. I mean, I look back to Super Bowl 39 when the Eagles lost to the Patriots, and for whatever reason, I wasn't as devastated because I was just happy to be there. But I looked at Super Bowl 57, and it was really a historic season. The team dominated everybody. Jalen Hurts playing at an MVP level, and he did so in the Super Bowl as well. They're up by 10 at halftime. I'm getting text messages from people, some of my friends who are Giants fans. Oh, congratulations, you guys won. <laughs> and then to see it wet. And the way that it did on that holding penalty, it's the most upset I remember being after a sporting event a really long time. How about you, Ray? You have one that sticks out, comes right to your mind right away? Yeah. Something you want to block out? It's funny because there are the like the championship moments. There's a few recently that stick to mind, but I think the kid inside of me wants Ryan Howard to not hit that ground ball to first base against the Cardinals. And I think that I'll always sit there and I want to block that out of my mind. When he blew I think out his Achilles? It. Yep. That's exactly that moment where it just felt like the entire run collapsed upon you. And that team, as good as they were, that was it. 
That was all you get. Game five, 102 wins on the season. And for some reason, it's the thing my brain always comes back. I mean, not for some reason. It's the season ending, and it's my favorite player, you know, from my childhood. Yeah. Blowing out his Achilles and his career never being the same. I can't can't get that image out of my head, and I would love to block it out forever. How about that? My, my two are both when I was a little kid also. Uh, I have two of them, and they both, like, brought tears to my eyes. One was Black Friday, Phillies-Dodgers. Uh, playoff game. Uh, Larry Boa brought it up when we had him on as a guest the other day. Uh, a bad play at the end. Uh, it looked like the Phillies got out. Phillies didn't make a substitute. Anyway, they lost on what was a Black Friday game that they should have, could have won. And then another time was the 76ers when I was I was young. But I was like uh, eight, maybe nine. Uh, lost in the finals to the Portland Trailblazers after they were up two to nothing. Bill Walton on the Portland Trailblazers. Doug Collins on the Philadelphia 76ers, who we have to give a uh, shout-out and a congratulations to, inducted into the Hall of Fame this weekend. So way to go, Doug. Uh, but, yeah, when they lost to the Portland Trailblazers, I was at my friend Glenn's house, and I tried to act like I didn't care all that much. I felt the tears, like, welling up. I, I grabbed the basketball. He had a hoop out in his, uh, uh, on his garage, and I went outside, just started shooting. I had tears rolling down my face. If I could block those two things out, maybe, Ray, my life would have been a little bit better. I don't know. Who knows? But Rich in Mullica Hill wants to check in. Rich, you're on 97.5 The Fanatic. What's up, buddy? Hey, how you doing, guys? Good. How about you? Good. Um, yeah, so mine is, um, you know, I was back in high school back then. Got a lot of friends watching the Phillies. Had to be a 93 Joe Carter, man. Oh. I mean, that, that was devastating. I mean, that was absolutely devastating. Where were you, Rich? Around. Where did you watch it? I watched it at my buddy's house. Um... You know, Rich Barrow, and then, um, you know, driving around, you know, listening to Harry back in the day with the, you know, aluminum. Uh, it, it, it's just awful. I, it, it, you know what? The whole thing was just awful. Um, the Joe Carter home run was just devastating to me. Yeah, that's a great, Rich. Thanks so much. I was just married when that happened, and we went over to, I think it was like in-law's house to watch that game. But that's when you remember where you were, and exactly like what you were doing, you know it's a huge moment. That was one of those. That's definitely a really good one. That was, And that was such a lovable team, the 93 Phils. It's funny. So many people say that. Now, I was working at the Daily News at the time. Not as lovable up close? I, so, full disclosure here, the, the late, great Ted Solari, who covered high school sports better than anyone in this country, Teddy, ha on Friday night home games, Teddy was in charge of covering the Phillies because we would give our beat writer the night off on Friday nights. Friday night home games, Teddy would go down there, and every time he came back, I cannot stand those guys. Like, Teddy, <laughs> he could as he said. They were ignorant to him, all that stuff. They had that persona that everybody loved, right? That, oh, they're tougher than everybody else. They drink beer just like me. They have a bad mullet just like me. So everybody loved him for that. Being a, you know, knowing someone on the inside, it was, it was always funny to hear him talk about them, but... There are, we have in Philadelphia some great moments. Some bad moments. You mean. Great bad moments. Yeah, there's a, yeah. Reason, there's a reason why we're as angry as we are as a fan base. We've never had a dynasty in this city, and we've had a lot of heartbreak. Yeah, yeah, too much of it. And Alan wants to share it. Alan, you're on 97.5 The Fanatic. What's up, buddy? Oh, boy, great show. Thanks for getting me up so fast. Oh, I absolutely. Thank you very much. So, I'm, I'm uh, 73 years old. I was at Black Friday. I was at the game. Ryan Howard tore his Achilles. By the way, I think Ryan Howard's an answer to one of my uh, a trivia question that I uh, came up with, which is who's the only player to make the last out in postseason two years in a row? But uh, pretty good. If you remember the year before, he took the call third strike, and every, now you're looking back on it, and Richie took a call third strike against the Cardinals instead of ripping his Achilles. But in, in any way. My memory, the one, the only sporting event I ever actually shed a tear after, was also involved the Sixers, 1980, Game Six of the NBA Finals, a Friday night at the Spectrum. The Sixers were down three-two, no Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. I'm not saying they would have gone back to LA and won Game Seven on Sunday, but at least everybody assumed that was going to happen. Nobody figured on a rookie named Magic Johnson playing center forward and guard and dropping 42 points on the Sixers and breaking my heart. Alan, that is a great one. I am right there with you. Thanks for the call. It was a, indeed a Friday night. 
Uh, I took a phone call during the game. Or, or, no, I guess the game was going on. I don't think it was on TV. I think it was on tape delay. And uh, I was all of, like, seventh grade or something. A, a girl that I was dating broke up with me, and the Sixers lost in the NBA Finals that night. Wow. It was a devastating, devastating day for Bobby Cooney. See, this is why he's so angry, Greg. That's, that's a hard one-two punch started right started there. at a young age. Yeah, you know what? Maybe I do have issues that I didn't even know about. Ray, you've brought it to light. The couch Ooh. is out there. You can lay down, and we'll talk about We're it. We're running really late here. You, I, my fault. I apologize. Listen, when we get back, we're going to have more of this uh, with you. Also, want to talk about uh, some more of the, the Flyers goings on a little bit. But I want to hit up Bill about the Eagles. I have a question as far as they go, and I wonder if he has the answer for me and what your answer might be on it. 610-632-0975. This is Middays, Bob Cooney, 97.5 The Fanatic.
97.5 The Fanatics signing bonus. That's right. All you have to do is text the word PROFIT. That's PROFIT, P-R-O-F-I-T, to 45911. Or you can enter it on the Fanatic app or at 975thefanatic.com. One winner selected at random will win $1,000 in this company-wide contest. Winners will get a call from Beasley, so be sure to answer your phone. Complete rules at 975thefanatic.com. 97.5 The Fanatic signing bonus is presented by Rand Spear. The accident lawyer demand Rand for justice. Please never text and drive. Good luck. This is Philadelphia's sports station for breaking news. Now, more with Bob Cooney. 97.5 The Fanatic and 97.5 TheFanatic.com. Also, something else you shouldn't do. Don't pull over and look at eclipses. Have you seen the signs on that? You probably saw them over in Jersey. I know they're over there, Bill. I didn't see them. Yeah. You know how they'll say, like, you know, stay awake, alert, and alive, or they'll flash up some? The flashing this weekend was, of signs, that is, right, was uh, eclipse on Monday. Don't pull over and watch. Go to a parking lot or go somewhere else or whatever. But, yeah, it was, it was letting people know that na- then is not the time to just randomly pull over and start staring at the sky. So, Bill, I don't, I don't expect to see you doing that today. Yeah, because we'll be driving back from the station tonight around that time. Yes, we will. I have to go get my son right after. Uh, it's going to work out perfectly for me. I, I, will give, I will wear my Dylan given sunglasses. That will prevent me from go- going blind. Now, you can only get eye damage if you sit there and, like, stare at it. I would assume for like minutes on end, right? I mean, you can just glance up and see. Ah, uh, da, da, da. That's not what the op, the the op, what are they called? Op- the eye op- doctors. Yeah, not what the eye doctors were saying. I disagree. Well, I'm I'm gonna go with the guy that's got the the degree in eye doctor. I have oh. eyes. Yeah, you do. I looked at the 2017 eclipse for a and minute. And right now like, you're complaining you don't have your contacts today and you can't see. So I haven't I been able know, to man. see since I was. I've had contacts since I was like 13 years old. I don't know. So I, I didn't know that. 20. I'm going to throw a disclaimer out, too, because this is the lawyer and me coming out. Do not accept any medical advice from Bob Cooney. He has no medical degree or degree in ophthalmology. That's a good point by you. I do have a friend that's an ophthalmologist, though. Ken Heist, my good friend. Yeah. Oh, well, that makes you qualified. Well, I mean, I could ask him. I, actually, I'm going to text him during the next break and say, seriously, what kind of eye damage am I going to get if I look up at this eclipse for a second or two? Like, how, how is the curious person not looking up? Do, all right, let me ask you. <laughs> I'm getting all hot and bothered by it. <laughs> Do you have, do either one of you have glasses that weren't issued by Dylan McKinnon? Do either one of you have sunglasses for this, specialty glasses for this eclipse? I do not. No. You're, you're not going to go, all right, so you're standing outside during this eclipse. Are you not going to look up and see what it looks like? I'm going to try not to. You will. I'm going to try not to. But for me, it's, look, I don't look up at the sun, you know, so I'm not going to look now. Well, you know think. what it looks like, so at some time in your life you've looked at the sun. Probably. Yeah. I'm going to glance. We're all going to get a glance. We, we have this to be honest with ourselves. All, all medical advice. Is it? Keep yes. the disclaimers coming. They had, they had... Bill's got me covered. He's a lawyer. Emails set in uh, to the morning show upset with uh, Connor for saying that he was going to do this. Um, oh, really? The eye doctors are not happy with us. I can't pronounce it, so I'm just going to keep saying eye doctor. I hope you guys don't mind. I, I might have to put a call in. I, I, I really... I, re- I think we have to clear this up. So I'm going to send a text out to my friend and see if he's, you know, between surgeries or something like that. And he can let us know exactly what we can or cannot do. I am not advising anyone to go stare at the sun and see what happens uh, during the eclipse. No, I'm not saying that. We will get, and thank God I have a lawyer sitting next to me with the disclaimer, but I, I will try to get an expert on this subject on I like the that phone idea. before we get out of here. All right, Chris and Penn Salkin, Euro 97.5, The Fanatic. What's going on, Chris? I can't see. I can't see. <laughs> <laughs> it's my fault. Oh. I love you, Bobby. Joe Irish, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> I hear you. Season starts today over there for my kids. You can see them. So. Oh, good. Good Top luck to her. How have they yeah, looked this year? Softball team good? Yeah. Uh, they're, 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 they're fighters, man. They're definitely I, I, Irish players. So okay. They'll, they'll fight. And, and you know Sophia. She, she's the captain again playing shortstop. So awesome. it's all good. Awesome. Um, Bill, I love you on the weekends, brother. You make my days, but man, doing the lawn. My family's like, what's what, what's taking so long? I'm like snaking beers, listening to Bill. I'm like, oh, I gotta just move this shrub. I don't, I'm not moving anything. Uh, I appreciate that, listening. man. Appreciate it. Um, but what do you guys think of this? 
if the kid is, is still struggling out, out in center field, Rojas, for night, give him another two weeks. I give him another two weeks just just because the kid's defense is phenomenal. So if he if he if he craps the bed, I'm telling you, man, I don't I don't know if they'll do it, but would you guys do it? I'm taking Stott. I'm moving in the short. I'm put I'm putting the wit at second, and I'm moving Turner out to center field. He played it, man. He is a. He, it's not even that he's bad anymore. He's a basically a butcher. He don't even want to get in front of the ball. You guys disagree uh, or no? Uh, yeah, sorry, I do, Chris. I I'm not man, moving a shortstop sure. out to center, a second baseman to second, a utility guy uh, to short. Uh, no, Turner it's, has it's, played in the outfield in his career. Field, yes, yeah. close to 400 oh, innings. I think he's played in the outfield. Yeah, oh yeah, absolutely, and he can fly. You, you lose no speed. He was considered close to a gold glove guy out there, and Stott's the best shortstop on the team. I, I don't know what what what, what we're missing there. I just it's it's just it just Tease me that we let this guy for three hundred million dollars, and I'm stand up ovation. That's great, Bobby and all. Kumbaya, me and you grew up in the same cloth, just a different house. That ain't that ain't flying on my block, man. I gave you three hundred million dollars. I want to see results. I don't need you to be an all star, but a routine ground ball, man. You you <laughs> you got to make the play, man. You yeah, gotta, you got to do it. And I'm surprised, Chris. Thanks so much for the call, and good luck this year with the softball. We had Larry Bow on. I think it was uh, opening day or the day before opening day, and I asked him specifically about that. Uh, why was Trey Turner there? He thought it was mostly mental. And, uh, you know, because of the contract he signed, signed last year, because of the expectations put upon him coming here to Philadelphia, Larry thought it was, was all mental. Now we're seeing, I thought they were silly mistakes last year, getting the balls and then just making bad throws, or routine plays he turned into one hoppers at first. I don't know what it is, but it doesn't bother me all that much for some reason. I think it's not bothering us right now because we're more focused on the lack of hitting at the plate. I think if these guys were hitting, we'd be more focused on the fielding. It's just you're being distracted because I, I don't think I don't think they should move Trey Turner to the outfield. I think that would be an overreaction. He has done it. Mike just indicated. He had, was that Mike? Chris. 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 Yeah. Chris just said it. He has done it in the past. I think that would be an overreaction this short into the season. But, yeah, I don't want to give them a pass on the fielding. They got to start hitting at the plate, but yeah, your three hundred million dollars shortstop should be able to field a ground ball. But like you said, Larry Boa also said he expected Turner to be better. Yeah, that, that he focused on this in spring training. So that's what's blowing my mind is how is he not better when this is something he was working on? Yeah, and if it was something mental, uh, that's a lot easier to get over than something physical. You would think. All right, to clear up this Johan Rojas stuff, our own Andrew Salchunas has texted me. And here's what he had to say about Johan Rojas. I wanted him down to start the season and said you can't you can't send him down now nine games into the season. You send him down now, it is a bad message. But if you started him in AAA and give him time to get more comfortable offensively, the messaging is so much better. Um, okay, yeah, I, I hear what Andrew's saying on that. My argument at the beginning of the season was where are your best hitting instructors? Wouldn't well, you we assume thought, they're up up here? We thought they were up here. The whole lineup's not hitting right now. So, now, I, I agree, and, and I know the argument's been made. I think John's made this too, Andrew. You don't learn how to hit major league pitching down in the minors. But Andrew's point was, hey, they completely revamped his swing. Let him learn down there while he's learning a new swing. I don't know. I just think, let's relax. It's been nine games. I know he does look lost at the plate, but it's been nine. It's only been nine. Let's just take a breath. My, but the only problem I have with it, Bill, is they say, and, and they have, and you, you reiterate it, that they worked on his swing. What did they work on? And I'm not saying the, the 045 average right now. He looks like John Daly hitting a driver. I mean, the bat starts way back here on his swing. and There's no compact swing there. I would think that's what you're doing with a guy like Johan Roas. When you're working on his swing, wouldn't you work more towards a compact swing than this big sweeping thing that he's got going on now so here, here's what's great andrew from the morning show is texting you tyrone from the best show ever is texting <laughs> me we got a battle going here about johan rojas tyrone wants it known he's only played in seven of the games seven of the games yeah that's coming from tyrone he's right it's only been seven games and and i said it on friday tyrone's exactly right i said on friday can you just put out the line i remember ray i said on friday yep. i i wanted a successful weekend by the phillies and i wanted rob thompson to put out the same lineup i wanted to just see okay you know who one through nine is you know who one through nine is he did do that to his credit on friday and saturday 
Yesterday was the normal Sunday lineup where, you know, I guess you'd, I don't know what he does, but it, Sunday is the day of rest, apparently. But he didn't even rest Real Muto yesterday. No, they had a lefty out there on the mound. He took the guys out of the lineup. Again, you're going 26 games in 27 days to open up a season. Like, the, to open up pretty much April. You know, you had the three games and then... You had the, the, really the homestand to start it, but after that off day on Thursday that they begged for, that they pleaded for, that they made people sit seven hours there, you know, or really four hours, but you had the seven-hour delay from when it was originally slated to start to when it ended up starting Wednesday. They begged for that Thursday off because they knew they had 26 games and 27 days in April in this ramp-up phase of the beginning of the season. These guys are going to sit. They're going to keep doing it, and we can complain about it or we could just get used to it. And the Rojas thing, where's the other option? We act like... Babe Ruth is sitting there waiting behind Johan Rojas to hit. Yeah, Pache Whit Merrifield right now is 3 for 17 to start the season, and Pache is a 173 career hitter. Or Johan Rojas deserves the opportunity to figure it out because he's your best defensive option there, and it's been literally seven games for him. And, and right. I mean, this is the easy talking point for a lot of people, a lot of fans. Oh, Rojas, Rojas. We should be focused on Castellanos and Trey Turner because if yeah. those guys hit, and Harper and Romuto can do what he did on Saturday, which is protect. If you're going to intentionally walk Harper, we're going to make you pay. Rojas at the plate isn't going to matter. No. It's just not. No, it sh- and it shouldn't. It really shouldn't. All right, let me get to the callers here. Frank in Bucks County, you're on 97.5 The Fanatic. What's going on, Frank? What's going on, Bob? What's going on, boys? Uh, listen, I-, I wasn't planning on touching on much Philly today, but I- after that last call, and God bless the guy, I, I-, I have to say that this is the only town in-, in America where nine games into a 162-game baseball <laughs> season, guys are calling and saying your-, your $300 million shortstop needs to go to center field. I, I almost <laughs> drove off the road when I heard him say you that. You got to love it, Frank. It's a, you know, it's a, you, you, it's a, you laugh. Uh, but, um, no, listen, I wanted to uh, touch on uh, what I wanted to block out, um, you know, with the Eclipse coming. And, and, and I hate to say this because I was one of the biggest process guys you could find, Bob. I want to block it out. I don't, I, I don't want it to exist on the record books. I, I wish it never happened. Uh, and it's mainly because of one guy. Uh, and, and, and the initials are BS because, you know, to me, he ruined the process. He ruined what could have been a, a, a monumental approach to building a championship team. And through his selfishness and his unwillingness to be a professional, he ruined it. And he ruined what could have been, I think, one of the best duos. And I'm not talking about Simmons and Embiid. I'm talking about Jimmy Butler and Joel Embiid. That could have been one of the best two-man duos we would have ever seen in our lives. And this dummy decided to ruin it. So I wish I could just block that out and I never had to know whatever happened, Bob. So the process, that, that's interesting. Franks, thanks so much. Really appreciate it. The argument to be had would be, well, if you block out the process, you're not going to have Joel Embiid and Jimmy Butler. You got that because of the assets and because of the draft pick that you got and you wouldn't have had Joel Embiid if he didn't break his foot in, in pre-draft I was going to say, because that's yes and no, Bob, because the only reason they got yeah. Joel Embiid was yeah. because they didn't get the number one overall pick that they thought they would have gotten going through the process. They end up getting third. And like you said, Joel breaks his foot. Really, that's all that came out of the process, and it wasn't even really a result of the process. That's a really great answer. I mean, you think about the process. You had a, two number one overall picks. That did absolutely nothing for you, pretty much, in Ben Simmons and Mark Elfo. Literally nothing, yeah. You had a number three overall pick that turned out to be Jalil Okafor, who had a game that was really good back in the 1980s and 90s, but didn't equate to this time. And then you got a number three pick that you lucked into getting Joel Embiid because he had a broken foot and other teams got off of him. It, it's crazy. Mike and Delran, you're on the 97.5 The Fanatic. What's up, buddy? What's up, guys? How you doing? Yo, yo, I'm doing great. Yo, the best, the second best pick he got out of the process never even put a Sixers jersey on in the Kel Bridges. Like, like, <laughs> you know what I mean? Yep, it's yep, you got that right, too. Terrible. Bob, I got two things I want to talk about real quick if I can that I wish I could stare directly at a, at a, a lunar eclipse or solar eclipse so I couldn't have seen any of them. Um, ben Simmons passing that ball to Matisse Thibault against the Hawks. Oh. That I, is I, a great one, I, Mike. I don't think I was ever angrier at a sports, and we've we've dealt with a lot of crap, right? I yeah. was never angrier than when I watched that. I knew I knew one of our old friends, Anthony Ragato's heart broke because he was the biggest Simmons supporter. But then uh, the one I, the one that I I haven't heard, which was which was also as recent, was the Kawhi Leonard 
what was it, triple doink or quadruple doink. Yeah, point. that's another I'll great never, one. I'll never forget ben, um, uh, Joel Embiid standing there on the side next to Kawhi, looking up at that shot, bounce around. And, like, that was our year, Bob. I mean, they went on the win, right? The Sixers win that series. I think the Sixers win the NBA final that year. And I will, you know, like I said, we've gone through a lot of heartache, way more than we haven't. And that's the one, if I could never have my eyes laid on that, I wish I never saw it. Because that, that destroyed our chance to probably be a powerhouse in the NBA and win, a, and win an NBA Finals that year. But, you know, I'm going to go stare at it again today so I don't have to feel anything going forward. I don't want to see any more. Go Birds! <laughs> Mike, thank you. Those are two great ones. Great ones. Man. I mean, you think about that. A pass totally changed the progression of this organization. The worst part of that was not watching it was bad. But then everything that happened after that, where even Doc Rivers, who I wasn't a big fan of, said, you know, yeah, we need Ben to do certain things differently, Joel, whatever. Simmons never wanted to play for 76ers again. You did that, and now you don't ever want to play for the 76ers again because we're basically calling you out on a ridiculous play. I am who I am. That's what it is. I, I do have friends that defend it that say, well, Rivers and Embiid never should have said something like that. Okay, I'll, I'll if you want, I'll agree with you on that. But you got to tell me as a man, you want to leave because two guys said maybe something to the press about you that they shouldn't have. Like, yeah, you sh he's got to shoot the ball there, or you know, got to be better in that situation. If that was the case, there'd be a lot of people quitting on their teams in pro sports. No more so than the head coach of the the hockey team. And it was so egregious. How, how do you not say anything? So you're saying you could support, hey, Embiid shouldn't have said anything. Doc shouldn't have uh, said anything. Yeah, I come how, away with, oh, okay. What are you going to say? I mean, you looked at everyone saw it. Everyone saw it. It was ridiculous. I, I, I thought it was such a tell to his pro personality that that offended him so much that he didn't. I came on these airways pretty soon after and said, I don't think he likes playing basketball. Well, you were right. I, maybe. I, I I mean, he's got this back injury, supposedly, but I, he's shown me nothing that he loves playing basketball. And I saw it up close and personal for a few years, more than a few years. I don't know. I, I it, That thought came to my mind for a reason. Say, I, I love this topic today, what sports event we wanted to block out with the whole solar eclipse, but now I'm just angry. It's supposed to be a positive day about <laughs> the Sixers, maybe and we're that... reliving Ben Simmons in the process. <laughs> maybe that's why Ray has such a bad attitude. It's me. It's all on me. Cousin Ryan, you're on 97.5 The Fanatic. What's up, Ryan? Oh, Bobby boy, what's up, brother? How you doing? Good, man. How are you? Doing great. Thank you. Um, I, uh, you know, I, I tuned in right when you guys were talking about this, and whoever said it hit the nail on the head with, we shouldn't be mad at Rojas. We should be mad at the other guys who are not picking up where they should be at to let Rojas have his time to get his bat at that in. Uh, yeah, I, I, I agree with that. I don't mind him getting his at-bats. I'm fine with it. If you're worried about a nine-hole hitter on this lineup, well, that's because of everybody else in this lineup. Absolutely. We're, we're, we're not mad at Trey Turner for not hitting how he should be hitting. We're not mad at, you know, Alec Bohm for picking up. Well, Bohm's actually playing, uh, hitting pretty well, well. But, you know, the guys who should be hitting, Castellanos, Real Muto, guys who we should be depending on, they, we should be mad at them for not picking up and allowing Rojas to grow. Yeah, I totally agree with you, Ryan. I think you hit it right on the head. Thanks for the call. Appreciate you. Um, I, yeah, if if our ire is going anywhere towards Johan Rojas in this four and five start, of which he's only played seven games, maybe it's a good thing. Maybe we're just digging. <laughs> I don't know. I I. I don't understand it. There's other places to go because of it. Yeah, we wouldn't be talking about it if the other guys were doing their job. I mean, as simple as that. I mean, if anything was established by the Phillies this weekend, and Ray, you and I talked about this before the show, it's that Junior Marte should be in the discussion for MVP this season in yeah, the National 100%. League. 100%. Yeah, 0, 0.00 ERA. Yeah, he led an inherited runner. Okay. You know, yeah, baby Chris I, you know. Sanchez, keep the guys off the bases. Jeez, yeah, it was a fly the ball. Well, he's, yeah. he's just he's getting All outs. he does is get outs. That's he's getting it. outs. That's what he's got. He got yeah. five outs. An he, inning and two-thirds. Now, uh, like, Cy Young, it's embarrassing to even include anybody else when we're talking about it. Right. It's Junior Marte's to lose, I would say, right now. Uh, but, yeah, I'm a serious that he should be an MVP candidate, Bill. Are you on? We, we, we adopted him as our Philly favorite the day before the Phillies started this season. 
So are you on the Junior Marte uh, bandwagon with us, or does that mean I, I can't come back if I don't agree? Yeah, pretty much. Uh, then I guess I agree. Yeah, yeah no, we're going to bully you into yeah. that one. Sorry. Yeah. Ray <laughs> made the call there. Okay, we do get back. I do have a question for Bill concerning the Philadelphia Eagles. A an honest question. I don't know the answer to it. Perhaps he does. We'll see what you say. Also, we're still going to stay on this topic of what's something, you, if you could, you would totally block out of your sports life. Middays, Bob Cooney, 97.5, The Fanatic. Update. Sixers win in San Antonio. I'm Ray Dunn. This update is brought to you by Christian Heating, Cooling, and Plumbing. Get a $29 cooling tune-up and a 100% um, of it will go to Folds of Honor. Call Christian Heating, Cooling, and Plumbing today at 833-842-1989. The 76ers won a double overtime thriller.
Ever with Tyrone Johnson, Ricky Vitalico, and Chance Gordo. Right now, it's Bob Cooney, 97.5 The Fanatic, and 97.5TheFanatic.com. Hey, welcome back on this great Monday morning. Hope you're all doing well. Mike Vito was giving us some wrestling stories from the weekend from WrestleMania, and what a great time he had there. So I hope all of you that went, had fun, or watched, had a great time doing that. Uh, not my real cup of tea, but I am not going to yuck somebody else's yum. There's another so. event tonight, Bob. Monday Night Raw now. Oh, is that here too? I is think that Ty, at Wells Fargo? I think Ty's got to be at Wells Fargo. I think Tyrone's right? going, yeah. Oh, okay. Cool. Now, wrestling is great entertainment if you're into it. If you're not, that's fine. No big deal. But I know when I was younger and I was into it, it was fun there. They come up with great storylines. Okay. You know what this show is about, Ray. What do we dub the, uh, like, something in, where the newsmakers come or something like that? The newsmakers are on with Bob. Oh, Cooney. newsmakers are on. I'm not good at listening to stuff like, especially when it's okay. my name. That's why you have me here. So we were talking about the solar eclipse and looking at the sun. So what do I do? That's right. I take one for the team. I call my friend the op ophthalmologist, Doctor Ken Heist. Ophthalmology. Ophthalmologist, Doctor Ken Heist. Optometry. And he was explaining to me the harm that it can cause the macula. In your eye if you look up at the sun too long during the eclipse so i said well you know if i glance up at it anything wrong he's no probably not you could glance up and see what it looks like don't stare at it too long he said you know what let me send you some information so this is what he sent looking at the sun even when it's partially covered like during an eclipse can cause eye damage there is no safe uh, dose of solar ultraviolet rays or infrared radiation uh that comes from a doctor that whose name I can't pronounce. So, yeah, don't don't look at the sun. That says don't look at the sun. Don't look it at the sun. Don't don't give anyone the idea to look at the sun. Look, I'm just You're saying gonna if have you the temptation up, as a human being, you'll have the temptation to make the mistake of looking at it. Don't encourage them to look at it. I'm not encouraging. It I'm does just saying sound like you're kind of saying, I'm "Oh, not, you're going to be fine." Oh god, will you lure me up again against this guy, please? Am I saying that? Have I said that? What I I, said, I don't get in the middle of you two anymore. I can't. <laughs> You have to. You're the only sensible one here. All I'm saying is let's be honest with each other. Everybody's going to at least glance. What we're saying is be careful. Don't, you know, yeah, no, preferably saying, don't, don't, do don't do it. Don't do People it. People are going to do it. But you're not supposed to encourage it, Bob. I'm not. Yeah, we're not encouraging it. Not, not encouraging. You're saying, well, let's be honest. If you want to be just like me, I'm going to look. I'm not going to look. I Listen. won't. Okay. Well, you're going to be inside teaching. I might be. I'm, I'm not going to be, be outside. 208 doing... is when this all this whole party starts. I'm going to be in outside doing some yard work. I'm going to glance. I, I, I'm just being honest. I'm going to Bob. Glance. I feel like don't Larry David for some reason. You do. You sound uh, like I'm Larry. I'm going to be James. honest. I'm going to glance. Don't do it. He sounds no. like Larry. Don't do it. Don't look. Springsteen was on the last episode of Curb Your Enthusiasm. I heard, and I saw some uh, clips of it. it. Was pretty funny. I got to watch. I haven't watched the new season yet. No. No. Wait. What? It's Ty yelling at me. Yeah, he's telling you not to look at it. What are you doing? I'm just I'm just saying, I bet you most of the population will glance. Well, you're not supposed Ty's to. Ty's yelling at me, don't to. do it. Yeah, we're trying to give the disclaimer here. I'll, do I'll not, try not take to. medical oh, advice Ty, from Oh, Ty, I'm Bob okay. Pete. I got my glasses. All right, I got are you going to wear them? Yes, I'll wear them. I swear. Because you told me to. I'll wear them. I'm going to glance up there with you some way or another. I'm seeing this damn eclipse. I don't know. We we I texted Adam Joseph to come on and talk to us about the the eclipse. I have a picture in my phone of me and Adam Joseph together here at the studio. That rap bastard didn't even get back to me. Wow. Jeez. He's now you're taking Bob. shots. At, why? Now what I'm has upset. Into you today. <laughs> now you I'm upset. Right? I'm kidding. The earthquake Adam. got you on Friday. The solar eclipse got you today. We need a normal normal day. Okay, it's supposed Bob, to be. You're scaring me. It's supposed to be a positive day. We have a Sixers team. That looks like they are on a real playoff push here. I'll tell you what, they do look good, don't they? They do. They look better than I ever could have hoped or imagined. Look, we were all, like, wishing Joel would come back and be somewhat healthy. Did you ever imagine that he would look as good as he looks right now and be meshing with these players and these new pieces as well as he's been looking? So here's something that I brought up yesterday on that, on that exact topic, Bill. So Kevin Cooney asked me yesterday, he says, is this the best shape Joel Embiid has ever been in coming back from an injury? And Kevin knows, you know, I, I, I was around a lot of it. Dee was sitting next to him. She was around a lot of it. I saw up close and personal Joel Embiid coming back from injury and looking and being like, wow, he's out of shape, all that. Is he in better shape now 
than he ever has been coming back from injury? I don't know. What I do know is he's a lot better basketball player. Spot on with that. Yeah, for sure. I mean, do, doesn't he look – he, he looks does. even better now. He looks as good now almost at the, as he did at the beginning of the season. And at the beginning of the season, he was doing things he's never done even in his MVP season last year. So, look, I, I said it earlier on in the show. I'm going to be a glutton for punishment because I am back all in on this team. I know a lot of fans are jaded. I know we've seen it over and over again, them losing in the second round. But if you look at the silver lining here, don't look at the solar eclipse, but look at the silver lining. Him getting hurt could actually be a blessing in the long run because you even look at how the seedings may end up being. And uh -huh. with the way the NBA doesn't reseed after your, your first – you know, they, they do the bracket. They right, do the bracket right. with the NCAA. This could work out great. You may get Milwaukee in the first round. You may get Cleveland in the second round and then not have to play Boston until the Eastern Conference Finals after they battle with maybe the New York Knicks. Yeah, it, it could all play out perfectly. I am so impressed where Joe Embiid is, even the other night, and I don't know if you saw this play or not. He's going down on a fast break and goes behind the back on a wing out to Kyle Lowry. Lowry catches it, throws it right back to him, catch layup. What doesn't come back as quickly as uh, you would expect is just a feel, a touch. For him to throw behind the back bounce pass and then get it back in return on the full run and lay it in, little microcosm didn't look huge, but that's a big play. I played that exact play-by-play -play on my show yesterday on the weekend from Tom McGinnis because he's going through it, and then after he said, the two veterans making it look easy. Yeah. Um, He's never played with Kyle Lowry before. How are they making it look easy on the court? That's why I'm getting so excited. Uh, and, and you know what? Don't be Jay. Don't. Uh, this is the one thing about sports, and I truly believe this, and I've had this argument. Uh, we had it on the morning, morning show a lot. In sports, the past shouldn't mean much of anything. Like, if you're really going to go into this season and say, I'm not, I don't care about the Sixers because they're never going to get out of the second round anyway. Okay, they didn't before, and if you don't care and they do, where are you? Yeah. Every season is its own entity. Yes, maybe the result has been the same in past years, but how many guys on this team weren't with the 76ers in past years when it happened? And one big name wasn't with them, Nick Nurse. Exactly, exactly. So I I'm here to tell you, I, I agree with you, Bill. I'm here to en enjoy the ride. I think it might be something pretty cool that's going on with this Sixers team, and we don't even really know what the Sixers team is because we talked about it earlier. Where are you? What do you do? Do you start Nick Batum? Do you start uh, Kelly Oubre? Are you starting or are you bringing off the bench maybe a Tobias Harris, which somebody, which Ray suggested in his radical plan last week? There's a lot of pieces that we just don't know about. And I don't know exactly where they go. I assume Nick Nurse does, but I don't know what the set starting lineup is for, for the playoffs. No, and I don't know if Nurse knows yet he's going to still have – few games left to figure that out some practices to figure it out but the one thing we do know is the two pieces who will be in the starting lineup Tyrese Maxey and Joel Embiid Maxey drops 52 points last night I think this team the sky is the limit with the pieces they have around those big two yeah and Maxey had a great thing to say after the game he said you know I want to thank Joel Embiid because the night before I can just kind of run around on the floor for 25 minutes and he only had seven points I think on Saturday night uh, you know, he said, I can do that, and, and we went comfortably because of him. Now tonight he's not there. i got to pick it up a little bit. Pick it up a little bit. He goes from 7 to 52, which is pretty miraculous. Joe in Bethlehem, you're on 97.5 The Fanatic. What's going on, Joe? Ah, not much. How are you guys doing today? Doing great. Thanks. So I have a blackout, and uh, I think that, honestly, I don't know. I don't think anybody would be able to disagree with this. So if I were to black one thing out, it would be Andrew Bynum. Oh, that's a good one, Joe. And it's because that team, we were really just, you know, only missing a legitimate NBA center at the time, so you can't fault the team for going for it. But the players that were involved in that crazy four-team trade to bring them in, we had a full team. You, you know, Drew Holiday, Evan Turner here, there. We had Iguodala, Thad Young, Jody Meeks, Lou Will, and we had Vucevic. So instead of going after Bynum, if we would have grew Vucevic into the player that, you know, we all know today, 
man, that was that would have been a special team. And then, obviously, what follows that is since Andrew Bynum robbed us for all of our money, then we have to blow it all up and start the process. Nuts. That is a really good one. I appreciate it, Joe. Uh, I was getting ready to go on vacation. It was a Thursday night, I believe. And we were getting ready to go down the shore, so I made all my phone calls. I was on the Sixers beat. It was summertime, so I make my calls. Anything going on? Anything going on? And one damn executive said to me, yeah, you're going to be a little late uh, <laughs> for that vacation thing. There's something going on. And boom, the Andrew Bynum trade comes down. And it was – that was pretty cool. You thought – okay, because if you remember, the season before, I believe it was, the Sixers lost to Boston in like a – it might have been a game seven up there. I should know. I covered it. <laughs> but uh, so they lose. The next day, we have the uh, get-together – uh, literally the next day, so flying from Boston, boom, shoot over to the practice facility, and Doug Collins and I believe Tony DeLeo told us this isn't good enough. We're we're going to break this up. And I remember when they made the trade for Bynum. It may have been a temple, Ray. It may have been a temple. All the fans when he arrived were chanting Andrew Bynum, and we were all excited, thinking this is it. This is the big piece we were missing. Did he play a, a single game in a Sixers uniform? No, not one. Sixers traded Bynum and Jason Richardson. They got uh, the Lakers get Dwight Howard, Earl Clark, Chris Duhon. The Nuggets got Andre Iguodala. The Magic got Mo Harkless, Nick Vucevic, Aaron Aflalo, Al Harrington, Chris Anaya. Oh, my God. A whole bunch of stuff. But, yeah, that was supposed to be the turnaround. Then he hurt his, his knee. But I remember one time. So what it was was we would meet up with him like every Thursday. They said he would be available in the locker room. Uh, maybe... He showed up like, you know, two out of ten times or something. But one time he came and half of his hair was froed and the other half was braided. And it was like, what what, what the hell is that? Now, I got in trouble with uh, now Hall of Famer Doug Collins over Andrew Bynum one time because I tweeted out something I shouldn't have tweeted out. I thought they had a conversation that they didn't have. Although I still think I might have been right. But, um, yeah, that's what prevented um, the, the media to be allowed to go into uh, the gym because – Doug posted a sign and says, because of Bob Cooney, the media is not allowed in here until you are told. So, anyway, just some backstories. And once again, congratulations to Doug Collins becoming a Hall of Famer this weekend. Awesome. So happy for him. Uh, just a great, great honor. And I know texting with him yesterday, he is floored uh, by the honor. So, so when we get back. Bill put a good thing out there about the 76ers. Where are you? Where's your comfort level? You can also tell us your blockout story, but I do still have a question for Bill as it concerns the Philadelphia Eagles. All that and more. Middays, Bob Cooney, 97.5 The Fanatic. Philadelphia's sports station for breaking news has you covered on all the big stories this week. It's the final week of the NBA season, and the 76ers are making their push to the playoffs. Plus, this is the only place you can hear the games. The Eagles are getting ready for the NFL draft, which is fast approaching. What will Howie do? We're talking about it. And the Phillies have a busy week with a series in...
is Philadelphia's sports station for breaking news. Now, more with Bob Cooney, 97.5 The Fanatic and 97.5thefanatic.com. Welcome back. Beautiful, beautiful Monday. I am taking a tremendous amount of heat here at the station. I will tell you why in one second, but I will also want to tell you that the 12 o'clock hour, it's brought to you by Serviced First Heating and Air Conditioning. Get 0% financing for 72 months and a $500 rebate when you purchase a complete heating and cooling system from Service First. Learn more at servicefirsthvac.com. Okay, behind the scenes here, I walk out of the studio. Uh, Tyrone is upset with me. I, I will say justifiably, uh, um, I, I have to defend myself. I am not, I repeat, I am not encouraging people to look up at the eclipse with no eye protection. I'm all about protection, right? Okay, especially when it comes to your young eyes. What I said was, there's probably a pretty good chance that people are going to sneak a glance. My suggestion was don't, but if you do, you're probably not immediately going to go blind. Uh, I called my friend who's an ophthalmologist. He said, yeah, don't, don't, don't do it. And he just sent me a follow text. Make sure you have glasses on if you do it. All I was trying to say was, to be the realist here, not everybody's not going to throw a glance up without glasses on. If you do, just make it quick or don't do it at all. I don't know what I'm saying. but No, you, get the gist. <laughs> no, you have to know what you're saying on this one. But there no, is no I, I'm being of... honest here. You're going to glance. If you glance, no. just glance and then look away. Don't stare at it because you can hurt your eyes. Don't glance at it. That's what we're trying to get at here. There's no part of producer training in which we train our back-end producers to answer the phone for people saying that I'm blind because Bob Cooney told me to look at the sun. Okay, I don't want that phone call tomorrow. I don't know who's with us tomorrow, but I know for sure if you keep down this path, we're going to get one. That's Yeah, you're never going to believe what happened to my eyes. Bob said that I should sneak a glance at the sun. I'm not saying eclipse. that. I'm not saying But you have to understand it's... how it's perceived. They're, you're normalizing it for the people. It, it, all right. Don't normalize but, it, Bob. I, I'm, I'm, I'm waiting for Bill to jump in with some help for me. I just like keep some throwing lawyer the, talk, but I think I'm... Um, I just keep throwing the disclaimer in there. <laughs> Do not accept medical advice from Bob Cooney. That there is. it is. But but the realist Bob Cooney will no, say... <laughs> no realist. No realist. Only optimist. Optimistically, no one looks there. Okay. All right. That's what we are encouraging. Get don't the special look glasses. There. Get wait, Now, where do they have these glasses? Too? I don't know. I have like, no what idea. Did, we need Dylan to come in here and let us know. Like, that's another thing. Everybody's so gaga over this eclipse and stuff, which is cool. I like, you know, natural happenings to happen and everybody to get excited about it. That's cool. I saw a 105-year-old guy, Bill, uh, who has traveled all over the country to see every eclipse during his 105 years, uh, getting all amped up and stuff when I saw the story on Friday. And I was like, yo, Bo, I mean, I, you're 105. I don't know if I'd get all is amped up for Monday. You might not. No, I guess he gets See? the special glasses. Oh, well, he where wears did the we get glasses. these? That's, I, I thought maybe. <laughs> Why are you covering your face in disgust, right? I'm trying I to find can't. out where we get the glasses. <laughs> Today has been a lot. It's been a lot, Bob. Dr. Ken Heist, if you're still out there, that's the ophthalmologist that I had to reach out to. If you can tell us where to get these glasses, perhaps it, it's in his office in Philadelphia. I don't know. But ophthalmologists, please phone in and let us know where can we get these glasses. We'll even buy them if we have to. A little late in the game for this, isn't it? No, we still got two hours. <laughs> we got like an hour. Oh, an hour, yeah. So it begins. Well, you're not going to look at the whole thing. You just glance up and see what's what. <laughs> so is it going to get dark here? Up. Don't glance up. <laughs> what part is of that it? don't you understand? I get it. I'm not saying I don't understand like that. You too. You're not a realist. I am. I am. Who's a realist? I am. You know, I don't know, but ahead. we're way off track. All right, here's my big question for you when it comes to the Philadelphia Eagles. They've done a lot this offseason. Obviously, there's still more to come. Has their biggest move already been made as far as next year's team? Do you think it's still to come? Or possibly, could it be done in the draft? Well, it's interesting because you say biggest move. I mean, we've seen Howie Roseman usually make moves all the way up until training camp, even in the middle of the season. You go back to 2017, the Super Bowl year, they didn't get Ronald Darby until August. They didn't get Jay Ajayi until the middle of the season in October. 
You yep. go to 2022, the year they went to Super Bowl 57, they didn't get James Bradbury until May. They traded for A.J. Brown at the draft. They brought in Chauncey Gardner-Johnson that year in August. So things will still get done. Now, is there a big move to be made? I don't know. I, I doubt there's going to be this major splash, but they do need some more pieces. They'll address some of them in the draft, but you look at the safety room. As excited as people are about Chauncey Gardner-Johnson being back, they have to do something at safety. They only have Chauncey Gardner-Johnson, Reed Blankenship, and Sidney Brown, who tore his ACL in yeah. Week 18. That's it. Those are your three safeties on the roster, so they will add a piece there. And you even look at linebacker. N'Kobe Dean, Devin White, Ben Van Sumeren, they added Oren Burks on a one-year deal. Really a special teams player. We'll see what he does. And they added Zach Bond, who I really see more as an edge rusher in this defense under Vic Fangio. So I do expect them to add pieces both at safety and corner. But whether or not it'll be a quote-unquote big move, I don't think so. But I think you'll see something at those spots. What, what do you think will be the first and when position addressed? Talking about in the draft or in free agency? I don't know. Uh, they could go out and get a free agent right now. See, I wouldn't be surprised, and this isn't necessarily... A trade? This isn't going to move the needle for a lot of people. But I expect them to re-sign Zach Cunningham at linebacker. I think they'll okay. bring him back. Howie Roseman made it a point at the end of the year press conference to highlight how well Zach Cunningham played for them last year. Yeah. I think they're going to bring him back, and that may be the answer at linebacker. Won't make me thrilled, but that'll probably be the next move but then I think he's going to be patient. I think some of his best moves do come later on, see what happens in training camp. but And we'll see what they do in the draft. We'll see what they end up getting at 22. Well, it's interesting that you mention it because, yes, people are excited about CJGJ being back. That's it. He and Reed Blankenship, that's it. Sidney Brown ain't coming back before week, I would say, 10, just off the top of my head. That's all you got. Yeah, they have to do something. And, and I think they will, but who's it going to be? I know some people wanted Justin Simmons, which blows my mind that there's people saying, hey, bring in 30-year-old Justin Simmons as a safety, but don't bring back 30-year-old Hassan Reddick as an edge. That blows my mind. But if they could get him on a cheap one-year deal, the longer he's out there, the more affordable he'll become. Maybe Justin Simmons joins this team. All right, I got a couple more questions that I'm going to ask Bill about the Philadelphia Eagles. Also, we do want to dive a little bit more into the 76ers, what they're all about. And what's your block moment? What is the moment that you want to block out in sports of your life, much like the sun is going to be blocked out today? Don't look at it. Don't even glance at it. All that and more. Middays, Bob Cooney, 97.5, The Fanatic. Fanatic Sports Update. Please don't look at the sun. Just don't do it. I'm Ray Dunn. This update is brought to you by Juicy Juice. Juicy Juice is 100% juice, which means no sugar added, no artificial sweetener. It's just the full fruit flavor that your kids love. Find Juicy Juice at your favorite local.
Coming up at 2, the best show ever with Tyrone Johnson, Ricky Vitalico, and Jen Scordo. Right now, it's Bob Cooney, 97.5 The Fanatic, and 97.5thefanatic.com. All Eclipse, all the time. This is the station you want to be listening to. 97.5 The Fanatic. I did see uh, someone tweeted us, would you clowns quit talking about uh, this Johan Rojas situation? Why don't you get more upset about um, Castellanos or uh, Trey Turner? I think we that's what we threw in there with it. If we're worried about Rojas, we're missing what the real story is, and that's what, what the caller who called us clowns mentioned. We did exactly do that. All right, if I would have asked you before the show, Bill, and we're joined by Bill Calarulo today and tomorrow and Thursday, so it'll be a fun week here. If I were to have asked you before the show what the macula was, would you know what a macula is? I would have had no idea. Ray, macula, do you know what a macula is? Something to do with the eyes. It is. It's the round area of the center of your retina at the back of your eyeball. So when I called the ophthalmologist to find out, all right, what's going to happen if people, you know, he said it could, it could hurt your macula. Like I knew what a macula was. And I was like, oh, yeah, cool, Ken. Thanks for telling me that. <laughs> no idea. I had to look it up. But do not glance at the sun today. Don't do it at all during the eclipse, okay? You have a chance to do permanent damage to your eyesight. Don't do it. I don't know how many times I can tell you that. I did have a buddy text me, though, during the break and said, I'm not going to lie. I'm going to glance. <laughs> My cousin also texted me and said there are stores. She particularly has one over in Marlton, New Jersey. Uh, she said there are stores that are giving away glasses to protect your eye if you want to look at the eclipse. I thought they'd be more readily available. Like, I thought they'd be, like, everywhere. Like, we'd come in today and people would be handing out glasses willy-nilly. They were. You got one from Dylan. He only had two sets, though, and he gave me one. I don't know. We got to find out where he got them from. Dylan? Dylan hides. I don't know how many times we're on the show and I call for him like, hey, Dylan, why don't you come in and tell us a little something? N nothing. Well, he's a big way with the desk now. You know, he's around the corner. Oh, that's he's got right. The he desk. is. He's got his own desk yeah, and all now, that. Yeah, you know, I thought it's a little it, big time. I thought it was just because he liked working with the best show ever more than he likes working with us. Well, he doesn't like working with me, so that, that hurts your chances of getting him here on the show. You two have problems, do you? Um, I mean, it seems like it's taken off into a bit of a rivalry. I don't understand. Well, I know I, I understand where it started. There he is. He's just peeked around the corner. There okay. he is. Yeah, we need him in here for real quick before we get back to our sports stories. Dylan McKinnon, you handed me a pair of glass protective glasses today for the Eclipse. Where did you come upon such glasses? Uh, my mom bought them for me. <laughs> you, she bought these? You yes. had to pay for these. Yeah. For yeah. those who can't see, they're they're like 3D glasses, except they're blackened out as opposed to... And not like the IMAX 3D glasses that are nice and plastic. No, these are like is, the old 80s 3D glasses. Yeah. I think she got them in like a, like a big pack where she had a bunch of them, and she just... She put it in, like, an Easter basket. <laughs> As I am, I'm a 30-year-old man who still gets an Easter basket from his mom. Hey, I have a 29-year-old. He got the same thing, Dylan. So, look, Jen has them on. Now, Jen can sport these things. I don't think I – yeah, Jen can get away with wearing – she could probably wear them all the time and get away with them. But they, they totally blind you, Dylan. That, that makes me a little – I, I think that's a point, though. Uh, probably. <laughs> yes, it is. It probably is. Dylan, thank you so much. We appreciate you. Thank so, you, Dylan. All right, Bill, more questions for you as far as these Eagles go. Now, I am just throwing things willy-nilly at Bill, uh, our Eagles expert here at the station. So I, I, I do this because I like to learn what other people are thinking also. If I were to say to you, and you can answer these generally or specifically, maybe you have a name in mind in some of these, but who's your backup running back this year for the Philadelphia Eagles? It's going to be Kenny Gainwell. Okay. It's going to be Kenny Gainwell. I think they're high on Kenny G. They like him a lot. They talk about it. He does do a nice job with pass protection. I know fans have gotten on him at times, but I expect Saquon Barkley to get a lot more playing time than even DeAndre Swift got last year because we know Swift struggled at times with pass protection. The reason they paid Saquon the amount that they paid him is because they truly feel they got a true three down running back that's going to be on the field a lot. So Kenny Gainwell will be your backup, but let's hope he doesn't get that much playing time. Did you get the feeling like I did, and I've never talked to you about this, that sometimes you look out on the field and you'll be like, what are they doing with this running back rotation? 
I, I don't know if it was a, a point lot. of contention. What did you? Yeah, a lot. I mean, you just go back to week one, game one. They didn't even play DeAndre Swift in game one of the season against New England. And then at times you're thinking, well, what are they doing? And I didn't understand the rotation at all last year. So, look, I'm hoping that that will be answered this season with a Saquon Barkley. They didn't give him the amount of money they gave him for him to be on the sidelines. But we did. We scratched our heads a lot last year saying, why is Kenny Gainwell in, in this moment? So, Hey, let's hope we don't have that problem this year. But it will be Kenny G. And I think maybe they'll draft somebody later on. It's not going to be an early pick, but they'll probably draft someone later on in rounds. And another question we had last year was, where the hell is Rashad Penny? <laughs> Nobody yeah. knew where he was, but I think it's, they just didn't trust him. They didn't trust that he had anything left in the tank after all those injuries. It's Friday night. It's early September. I believe it's the 8th. It's 6 o'clock in Philadelphia. People are at their many parties, Eagles parties. They're about to play in Brazil. It's so much. Is it Brazil? Yes. Yeah. Uh, everybody's waiting to have so much fun. I already have my plans for that night, Bill. 6 o'clock being outside watching that game. The defense steps on the field. The starting defense, the first game of the season, is N'Kobe Dean going out on that field. If he's not, I don't know who your other linebacker is well, as of right now. I think it is, and I think they're going to rely on him again, which let's hope he's the guy you saw at Georgia. They were relying on him last year. They gave him the green dot in training camp last year after only playing 34 snaps as a rookie. And even when he was healthy, I thought it was up and down. He just wasn't very healthy to get a true picture of what he could be at linebacker. But, yes, I think they're hoping that he grows into being the starter at that spot. You'll also have Devin White on the field, obviously. But I do expect Zach Cunningham is going to come back. I think they'll re-sign him. I don't know what Oren Burks can be, the, the linebacker they signed to a one-year deal who was on San Francisco last year, mostly a special teamer. You have him as well. So we'll see. But I still think, I look at that defense, and I still think linebacker is a major question mark. They went out and they got Devin White. He wasn't the guy I wanted. I wanted to see them go get a Patrick Queen. They, yeah. didn't, they didn't want to pay the money for it. But I wanted a sure thing at linebacker. I was not happy that we're going to go into this season right now, whether you like the, the Kobe Dean, whether you like Devin White, we're going to go into this season again with linebacker being a question mark, and it didn't work out for them last year. Okay, that defense now leaves the field in Brazil on that Friday night, and the offense comes on the field, and they're announcing your offensive starters. And at right guard, they announce who? I think it's going to be Tyler Steen. Yeah? I do. I think it's going to be Tyler Steen. We'll see. They were kind of tight-lipped last year about what they were going to do at right guard. And then we all thought it was going to be a battle between Tyler Steen, the rookie, and Cam Jurgens. It was never a battle. Cam Jurgens had that spot from the start of training camp. But I think right now it's Tyler Steen. Could that change if they potentially get a stud offensive lineman in the first round? Which... If I had to put my money on it now, I think they're going offensive line in the first round. We talked wow. about that. And, you know, we're going to talk more about that on Wednesday night. We'll have Andrew DiCecco for our Birds Insider countdown to the NFL draft Wednesday night at 6 p.m. But I really think it's going to be Tyler Steen right now, unless they get an absolute stud in the first round. I, I, I feel so bad for you right now, Ray. There is a couple of things in life that make Ray sit in a chair and his forehead immediately hits the tabletop. Too many drinks is one, and the Eagles drafting someone on either line is the other. You, you're just totally against it, or it just bores you? It's just going to bore me this year. Okay. No. So, I kind of want to go I want to go secondary. That's that's where I want to see a dress. Specifically, in a, in a draft that has a lot of corners, I'd like to see them go corner. That That's that's just what I want this year. I'm aware that, you know, I'm being, you know, kind of distracted by the shiny object, and I want kind of the sexy pick versus, oh, yeah, they'll go to Stout and you. They'll be a starting you know, offensive lineman at some point. It's just, you know, I got it. I've seen them go to the trenches a number of times here. I'd like to see them get a little younger at corner and give give me something that's not projecting out Keely Ringo or projecting out, you know, Eli Ricks. Give me something that first-round talent that can go be an impact player for you right off the bat. I got to tell you, they, they're they pretty full at corner. Like, they, we can't kid ourselves. There's a lot of people there. People say, oh, they have an address, so you're going to have to go with Bradbury and, and Slay again. There's a lot of guys waiting in the in the wing, Bill, right? There are. Now, Isaiah Rogers has yet to be reinstated, the corner they picked up from Indianapolis. Is that just season. a formality? I'm hoping. Now, I was on the best show ever with Tyrone a week ago, and he found a clip of Isaiah Rogers talking about 
the gambling issue he had. And there's some concerns there because there are some issues about maybe there were bets being made on the running back who was on his team, Jonathan Taylor, the running back on the Colts about how much yards he was going to get in a given game. Some of those bets were placed from the stadium on Isaiah Rogers' phone. So there were some issues. What I'm hoping is the case right now is that the NFL, with everything that was going on with O'Shea Otani, that they didn't want to say, hey, listen, we just reinstated this guy who we suspended last year for gambling. I think it is just a formality. The people I've reached out to said they think he's going to get reinstated. So I'm excited for Isaiah Rogers because he was really, really good when he was in Indianapolis. You mentioned Keely Ringo. I'm very high on Keely. I think what people don't realize about Keely Ringo is how young he is. He was only 21 years old. He was younger and still is younger than a lot of these corners that Ray would like to draft in the first round this year. Keeley's still younger than these guys. Yeah. So I think his trajectory could be way up if he can learn from Vic Fangio and this defensive coaching staff. So I do like him. You still have Slay. They brought back Maddox on a one-year deal, which was smart. You have Zach McPherson coming back from an Achilles tear, which I think a lot of people have forgotten about. So I just would be surprised if they go corner. We've never seen Howie Roseman do it. He's drafted 13 times in the first round. Ten of those were edge rusher, defensive tackle, offensive tackle, or interior offensive lineman. So along the trenches. Right. Ten out of 13 first-round yeah. draft picks in the trenches. And then two wide receivers, one quarterback in Carson Wentz. So you don't see Roseman go corner. The Eagles haven't gone corner in 22 years. So I, that would surprise me. But Ray's right. There's a lot of deep Deep cornerback class, for sure. All right, let's stay on that subject a little bit. Uh, like I said, you can generalize or you can be specific. Who are your two starting corners next year, game one, Philadelphia Eagles? I think I'm going to go and say it's going to be Darius Slay and Isaiah Rogers. That, that's who I'm going with. And then your nickel corner is a question because is Zach McPherson going to be able to bounce back from that Achilles tear? Is Avante Maddox going to be able to stay healthy? Because when he is, he is one of the best nickel corners in the league. Or if the Eagles are able to go out and get another safety, do they play Coop, uh, Chauncey Gardner-Johnson down there? I have Cooper on my mind. We're talking about first-round draft pick. Yeah. But Chauncey Gardner-Johnson, does he play some nickel corner? We've seen him do that as well. He did it a lot that Super Bowl season. So I, I think the secondary is a little bit better than we're giving them credit for. I just think they need a couple pieces at safety, not necessarily cornerback. All right, so we've been talking about today, we brought up two subjects. One, who's the best athlete that you just can't stand? The best athlete during your, your lifetime that for some reason you just can't stand them. And with the eclipse coming today, do not, don't, don't even glance up at the sun today. Don't do it. Don't do it. I, I, I'm telling you, don't do it. Uh, with that in mind, what is the one sports moment that you could block out of your mind? And, Ray, we have some, some textures at 610-632-0975? Yeah, somebody chimed in with an athlete that they hate being Jason Tatum, the best athlete that they despise. I I'll tell you what. You put on that Celtics green, yeah, I, I just kind of automatically hate you. That's from my childhood. I, I, like, I, I, I don't despise him. There's reason, too. You had a pick there, and you decided Markel Fultz instead of him. Uh, I know how it all played out. I was covering at the time. Whatever. The let me ask you about that because you bring it up because I, I always get frustrated that they took Markel Fultz instead of Jason Tatum, but the Boston Celtics would not have traded if they thought Correct. the Sixers were going to take. There was a, I don't know if it was a handshake deal. There was there was a deal made that all right. Belangelo got played. Yeah, he didn't have to trade up. No, no. So, uh, I, <laughs> uh, that was such a frustrating time. All right, what else do we have? Anything else going on in the? On the yeah, we got hotline? a couple of uh, things to black out from the Super Bowl. We got the Hurts fumble. Multiple people texted in with that one. And we also have, of course, the penalty call at the end of that Super Bowl. So people kind of following along with the uh, Super, Bowl, Super Bowl thought process that Bill was on earlier. So that penalty call came up in my house this weekend. So I actually tweeted out comparing that call to the call in the Final Four of the women's college basketball. Exactly why it came up in my house. So I said, look, and I made my point was, technically, James Bradbury held. Technically, I thought that was an offensive foul. Right. 
I just hated to see two big games end like that. Now, I had some really smart people. Sometimes on social media, people just come at you and they're not intelligent. Sometimes they are. And the, the comment I thought was the smartest was that the referees were letting the James Bradbury type of hold go all game. They were letting them play. That's why you don't call it. But they were actually calling that Final Four game pretty tight, and they should have called that. What, what was your thoughts on it? I thought they let them be physical on Friday night uh, to some extent. You know, they let some things go, but I didn't think it was a wonky game like we don't know how to play because we don't know what you're going to call or not going to call. So I thought it was fair. On that play right away, I'm, I'm texting with my old boss from the Daily News, Pat McClune. We're texting throughout like the second half of that game, the whole second half back and forth. As soon as it was called, I texted right call. He texted with me. You don't make it there, though. I, so, like, there it is, right? It's the same yeah. as James Bradbury. On James Bradbury, I was like, come on, man. You, you, you got to know the feel of the game. It's like a referee, star player, has four fouls. Do you call a rinky-dink foul to make it their fifth foul and they're out of the game? Or do you say, I don't want to take their star player out of the game? That's tough. Yeah, there's a lot of people who commented at me basically saying, look, the ref has to call it the right way. The entire game. It doesn't matter if there's three seconds left. doesn't matter if there's three minutes left, ten minutes left. If it's a foul, it's a foul. You call it, but you hate to see it go that way. But that person on the text line also mentioned the Jalen Hurts fumble. That's a great one because, yeah, not only did it lead to them losing that game, you look at Jalen Hurts' stat line from that game, and I always have this in front of me because the Hurts haters get, get me upset. 27 of 38 for 71 percent he threw for over 300 yards he had a quarterback rating of 103.4 touchdown in the air 70 rushing yards three touchdowns also ran in the two-point conversion which was the first octopus in super bowl history did you know what an octopus was eight no i don't know an octopus in the nfl is when the same player who scored the touchdown scores the two-point conversion so as a quarterback, you can't throw it. You'd have to do what Hurts did. He ran in the touchdown, and then he ran in the two-point conversion. But that stat line I just read to you, the 300 passing yards, the 70 rushing yards, the four total touchdowns, no one in NFL history has ever done. And then you have that fumble, Bob. Yeah. And what made it worse for me, it wasn't even as if, if he got tackled and fumbled, I'd you get on live him. live with it. I'd get on him. Like, you should have protected the football. It just slipped out of his hand. It was so fluky. Anyway, that's a great one. Block that one the hell out. Yeah, yeah, that that was a great one. Um, I, I, I like how people look at other teams that you want to block out, too. We concentrate so much. Like the person that brought up Joe Carter hitting that home run, you want to block that out against the Phillies in, two, in 1993, I guess it was. Uh, that That's a good one. I like looking uh, to the outside like that, too. So, All right, we got all that. Uh, also want to get into a little bit more of the 76ers because we can do this practice up until the playoffs, but I think there was a lot of telltale signs this weekend that maybe will help us come to co some kind of a uh, solution. I'll let you know what's going on there. Also, don't forget, the eclipse is coming up around 2 o'clock. Don't, don't glance at the sun, please. We want to protect your, uh, protect your maculas, okay? That's what we're looking to do today as a station, protect everyone's maculas. All right, we have all that, a whole lot more. This is Middays, Bob Cooney, 97.5, The Fanatic. Fanatic Sports Update. Sixers win in San Antonio. I'm Ray Dunn. This update is brought to you by Bradford White Water Heaters. When you need a new water heater, choose one that is built to be the best. Choose Bradford White. The 76ers won a double overtime, a thriller over the Spurs, 133-126 last night without Joel Embiid, without Tobias Harris, and without Kyle Lowry. It was Tyrese Maxey's show, and boy, did he show out. 50 
Philadelphia Sports Station for breaking news. Now, more with Bob Cooney, 97.5 The Fanatic and 97.5thefanatic.com. Welcome back on this Monday afternoon, about 1.30 here. We have Eclipseness coming up at around 2 o'clock. It's going to last for about an hour and a half, Ray said. I have some more information on it. <laughs> Ray is so bothered with me today. Uh, uh, from my ophthalmologist friend, Ken Heist, no matter how dark your sunglasses are, it is not safe for viewing the sun during the eclipse. The special solar glasses are about a thousand times darker than regular sunglasses, which is necessary to filter out the harmful rays. And if you want to throw out a... No, I don't want to throw that out. Uh, no glancing. No glancing, no nothing. Even my friends that have texted me and said, dude, I'm going to glance. I told them no. Don't, don't, don't. Because I don't want you out. I don't want you to be turned day to day because of a, you know, a macula problem. Can't happen, Ray. I don't know if day to day, we talk about vision loss. That's a little, I think that would be more significant than just day to day. I, I, I assume you get it back. You, you know assume. Any, do you know anything? Do, do we know anybody that's walking around, like, blind because they looked at an eclipse? No, you... I mean, seriously. Because what you're not supposed talking about to. Here? You're not supposed to. Ah, uh, yeah, but reality says people have and nothing happens. Oh, see, Bob, this what? is... this. Don't is a, do it. Oh, my. I tried so hard. I, I, just, I just like driving them crazy, Bill. I'm like the kid in this relationship, and you're like the parent. In this instance, really this instance only. Every other thing, we're usually flipped age-wise. I don't know how I became the adult in the room. All right, so how I'm many, James Butler. Bill's the smartest out of all of us. We'll, we'll just grant him that. Yeah, Bill, I don't know about in, that. In like, all right, you're a little bit younger than me. In, in our lifetime, how many eclipses have happened? I know we had one in 2017. Does the total eclipse of the heart count, Bob? It could. You could go Bonnie. What was Does Ray name? even know that song? No, I know what I know the song. I know the name of the song. Totally, I'm not going to sing it for you, but I don't remember. Yeah. I don't remember. Is there a difference between what's happening today and the other solar eclipses? I, I don't know. I guess I don't remember all these warnings about looking in the sky before. But I'm going to say there's probably been a handful of solar eclipses in our lifetime. Yeah, I would agree. I I, I, I ask anybody out there, do you know somebody that's blind because they looked up in an eclipse? No, but I I'm do. Just cure. I do like your other question today, though. If <laughs> The, the moon is blocking out the sun. It's eclipse day. What sporting event or moment would you block out? I really like that question. Yeah. That was a nice play on the, on the theme of the day today. Because there's a lot of them here in Philadelphia, right? There are. Well, one that hasn't gotten mentioned yet. I didn't want to say it because I didn't want to steal any of our caller or texter's thunder, but was the NFC Championship game with Rondé Barber intercepting Donovan McNabb, taking it down the field. In the last game at Veterans Stadium, it was supposed to be poetic the way that ended. That one I would block out. That's it's, funny because – I'm sorry, Ray, go ahead. No, it's funny because you bring it up because I literally just got that on my own text line here from uh, my good buddy Tim Teefee sent that one in. That He would block that one out, but he was a little blocked out himself at, at that time, so Ooh. he doesn't remember it as well. Oh, See, I was, I was playing college football at the time, and for whatever reason – our football team, our coach, scheduled our end-of-the-year college football banquet that night. And there were a lot of us on the team who were Eagles fans, so they pulled in televisions for us. But there was also a lot of us who were Giants fans. We had a big New York – I went to Gettysburg College. We had a lot of New York Giants fans on the team. So not only did I have to live through the suffering of watching that moment and my heart breaking as an Eagles fan, I had to do it with all my college teammates loving every second of it because they were Giants fans. So I would block that one out in a heartbeat. Do we have a texture that has a good one, you said, Ray? Yeah, we got RT from Collegeville. Thing you wish you didn't see. Week 1, 1991, Randall Cunningham knee injury. Oh, yep. Bryce Pop. I remember that one. That was, I was actually, I was actually in the Bahamas with my wife, uh, a girlfriend at the time, soon to be wife. Uh, and they didn't have it on TV there, and I actually heard it on, on the radio or something like that in the Bahamas that he got hurt. Oh, uh, was that the breaking news station for sports in the Bahamas? Yes, it was, uh, it was a surf competition, and then, and then Randall Cunningham shattering his knee. But it's funny, you mentioned that Tampa Bay game. I actually, if I had to pick a play, I think I might have picked Joe Juravicious. Oh, yeah. He's still running, I think, isn't he? 
That one. And who was the big fatty of a linebacker that the Eagles had? Levon Kirkland. Levon Kirkland. He was yeah. a big boy. He was like he was. Oh, he. We talked about our boy D.J. Burns being a, a cheeseburger short of three hundred pounds. Levon Kirkland might have been a cheeseburger short of four hundred. Yeah, he was very big. He was loaded up back then. What are some moments that Philadelphia has caused that other fans want to block out? So obviously it would be something good from this. From our side, from the Philadelphia side, that maybe we've we've done to another city. Like, I'll give you an example. New England wants to block out Brandon Graham. That's what I was thinking. That's right? the first one that came to my mind. They they have to be like, yep, that's my eclipse right there. No chance that happens. He goes down, scores a touchdown, Patriots win, whatever. Eagles don't get that field goal afterwards to make it an eight point lead. Uh what what are some other ones you think? I would what, think I would think the Atlanta Braves want to block out the last two postseasons. That's pretty good, too. What's happened. And we didn't really talk about that today, Bob. What's going on with Spencer Strider? This is a huge, huge deal for not only the NL East, but all of Major League Baseball. You, you never want to see a player get hurt. As much as I dislike the Braves because I'm a Phillies fan, I want to beat them at their best. I don't want to see one of the best pitchers in the game go down with an injury, but it looks like Spencer Strider is going to miss some time and probably this entire season with potentially another Tommy John surgery. You hate to see it. I'm not rooting for it. But you can't deny that this does open the door for the NL East a little bit. It does. I mean, you know, he's – you talk about it when you break it down. You're talking about like 28, 29 starts that Strider won't be making, but it's more than that. Yeah. You know, it, it's a, it's damage to your bullpen because you're probably going to have to go to that a little bit more. It's meaning that you need guys like uh, – your, your secondary starters are going to have to come up way bigger than they probably would have with with Strider in the in the starting uh, rotation. Yeah, I it was funny. I heard something this morning saying, "Oh, the the Phillies should win ninety five, ninety six now." I I don't know how that directly affects the Phillies, except what would they have faced Strider two more times this year? So I don't know if you boost their win total up five because of anything. I don't. You know. the, the, the Phillies' win total should be boosted because we were hoping they'd come out to a quicker start. Now, it's not as bad as it was last season's start, but if they could have played that 600 baseball they played the last 107 games of the year, yeah, they would finish with about 98 wins. And yeah. 98 wins may do it now because the Braves finished with, what, 104 last year. I think six games is reasonable to say that's the difference without a Spencer stride. Could be, yeah, absolutely. I mean, he was 20-5 and five last year. They were looking for as much, if not bigger, things from him this year. Devastating loss for them. And it, it'll be interesting to see the trickle-down effect. Because, you know, it's the same thing. Zach Wheeler got shelved. What's the trickle-down effect? You have to find another starter. Now Aaron Nola has to step up. All of those things, well, that's what's hitting the Atlanta Braves right now. And I talked about this yesterday on the show, and some people were asking, well, can the Braves replace him? I'm sure they may try to make a trade. At the deadline, but you can't replace a Spencer Strider. He's one of the best pitchers in baseball. Yeah, but knowing the Braves, wouldn't it just be like the Braves? have someone in the farm system. Exactly. (laughs) And he'll come up and go like 14-3 and with a 3.2 ERA or something, you know, crazy good like that because that's what always happens with the Braves. Hate them. Coach in Reading, you're on 97.5 The Fanatic. What's up, Coach? How are you guys doing today? We're doing great. How about you? All right. The memory I want to block out, 1978. Phillies in a five-game NLCS against the Dodgers. Black Friday. I'm at the game. I'm 25 years old. They come back from L.A. 1-1. Game three, they should have won. Ball hit to the outfield. Um, Luzinski misplays it off the wall. Danny Ozark always put Jerry Martin in there in the ninth inning. He didn't tonight. And then uh, Manny Mota gets a hit. Dodgers win the game. He was out at first, by the way, Coach. What's that? He was out at first. He was out at first. You're right. Yeah, that was the one. Uh, Schmidt bobbled it. Boa picked started. it up. Yeah, yeah, he was out. Too bad they don't have re- didn't have replay. The next night, I'm back down again with my cousin. Raining like crazy. Carlton's pitching. The Phillies lose. Dodgers go on to win the World Series. Here's the other thing. It was at the vet. And back in those days, uh, do you guys remember the vet? Sure. Okay, so the, the top top uh, part of the stadium was yellow seats. And yep. back then, this particular, before this all happened, there was like a little aisle in the back of the last row of the yellow seats. It was about five feet deep. 
we carried lawn chairs into that game and set them up right at third base. The people in front of us might have paid 20 bucks. We paid 5 bucks. Carried our own chair into the game. <laughs> the, next, the next year, the vet put bleachers up in that same area. Wow. And that's, sold that, tickets. That's yeah. a terrific memory by you, Coach. Yeah. Well, Very I'm impressed. Not... <laughs> Thank you. It was like yesterday. And, um, you know, we partied out in the parking lot, the whole thing. But, uh, yeah, you're right. He was out at first. Manny Moda, I think, was the guy that was You're batting. exactly right. Pinch hitter extraordinaire. Coach, thank you yeah. so much. What a great phone call. That was that made me cry as a little kid. That was the game right there that he talked about. So refresh my memory because I was young. There was another blown call. Philadelphia Flyers, the offsides call. What year was Leon that? Leon Stickle was your referee for that game, Yeah, Bill. what year was that? Was that that was 1980. That was the year all four teams, Islanders, game six. Butch Goring always comes into my head as the Islanders player. I, I don't know if I'm correct on that or not. But, yeah, obvious offside call. Cost the, uh, the Flyers the game in game six. Never had a chance to win the Stanley Cup. Four, all four teams going to a championship. That's the, I don't think you get it as much, but there used to be those traditionalists who don't want instant replay in sports. And I've always been of the belief, get the call right. So let me ask you this. Are you for robotic umpires? That one is where I may draw the line. The, Me too. the robotic umpires. I'm all okay right. with all the instant replays and all that, but robotic umpires to me, because what I like about the traditional umpire is as a pitcher, you gotta learn the umpire. You gotta learn what, what are they calling tonight? What are they not calling tonight? As a batter, you know are they calling that outside strike? Yeah, I, I kinda like that. I think it goes to the game of baseball. Yeah. Now yesterday, kind of egregious in the Phillies game. There were some really blown uh balls and strikes called yesterday. Apparently, Angel Hernandez had a horrible day again yesterday. I don't know if you saw it on Twitter. Who was pitching? Was it the Yankees? I forget what it was. Guy's on the mound and steps off and then steps back on real quick and goes to throw a pitch. The batter's like, wait a second, what was that? Guy throws the ball. Angel Hernandez rings him up and says, strike three, you're out. Guy's like, he just stepped off. He completely missed the call. I, I don't call for people's jobs. I'm not about that. And I, I like, my mother-in-law is very into, like, comes out i hate umpires they're people they're, they have jobs uh, they have a job that's very scrutinized uh but like angel hernandez he's in the wrong profession sorry it's sorry funny. angel there's somewhere else for you buddy you talk about she, you know, she says i hate umpires i was laughing because i was at the flyers game a couple weeks ago when i turned to my fiance bridget and i said watch when the referees skate out on the ice everybody boos she says why just people don't like referees. Yeah. <laughs> they just don't like them. You put on a striped shirt, you know. <laughs> and you get booed. Yeah. I, I People often ask you, because my friend, I have a friend that runs the South Jersey referee uh, for high school basketball. And, oh, you know, they always ask me, come on, Coon, why, don't you, why aren't you a ref? You know, why don't you be a ref? And I'm like, I, I guess deep down I just don't like to get booed. Yeah, it could be. Who's the hated athlete that we have in our in our text chain here? Yadier Molina. Matt I from Maple Shade. Why? Oh, I, I hate him because he was associated with the, that Cardinals team. I I respected the hell out of Yadier. Nah, I hate him. Him and Albert. The best thing, honestly. Out of, we, say out of Yadier. <laughs> That's not easy to say. I respected the hell out of Yadier. <laughs> yeah. Yadier. Yeah. Wait, wait that was was that the 07 team? The, well, I he just always acknowledged years them years as the ago, 11 yeah. team that uh, the 11 beat team. the Phillies. Okay. Uh, but I one of the best things that came out of the 2022 run was the fact that you ended that era of Car Cardinals baseball. I felt like it was so poetic to end that era of Cardinals baseball because they ended my golden era of Phillies baseball. And I, that was part of the reason. Like, them winning that series, to me, it was everything I could have ever asked for. And then the Phillies go on and make the World Series. Great, but I just wanted to really end that Cardinals era of baseball because I despised them so much for what they did to us. Very lot. interesting. Yeah. yeah. Ray's yeah. got a lot of deep-rooted hate feelings, and then we're trying to work them through that. But when we get back... It's closing time almost, 2 o'clock, best show ever. We're going to talk to you a little bit more. Joe, you're on hold. We'll talk about your your moment that you would love to black out. Also, a couple more little fun things that we want to get to. This is Middays, Bob Cooney, 97.5 The Fanatic. Philadelphia 76ers basketball. Up top, Joel, three-point shot by Embiid. It's good. Adebayo was right there, and Joel nails his third three. The games are here.
Thanks for joining in today. I actually, this is pretty cool. You guys will, will appreciate this. You know our friend Natalie from the YouTube page. Well, she and her, her boyfriend, I'm going to go by their, their names on the YouTube, Mopar. They are, co they, they're a couple. Well, they sent me a, a picture the other night of the two of them at a bar doing a shot saying congrats on the new show. How do you like that? That's so it was for all of us. So that and was you, you could see it because you had yet to look up at a solar eclipse. You know anybody that's blind from Please looking at an eclipse? Running with that's this. all. Please under. stop running <laughs> yeah, with this. No, we're done. Um, uh, <laughs> it's coming up, 2 o'clock. The, the countdown is on for the eclipse. So whatever your viewing pleasure is, make sure you have your glasses. Make sure you do everything properly so that we don't have any macular damage going on today or tomorrow. Um, did, did we find? Oh, uh, never mind. Um, Ray, you said you have a blockout moment by your mother. Yeah, you said you were seeking the opposing fan base's yes. blockout moment, and it's all the miracles at the Meadowlands. Oh, oh that's, those are really good. Yeah, this coming from the dumb. Giants fan that she is. I think she I'm is. the only one here that saw all three. Am I correct? What year were you born? 1983. Probably, okay, this was in 79. I was walking in the hallway of my house, literally kicking the wall. Because I was so mad that the Eagles lost. That's how I was as a little kid. I was a little kid. I was so, well, I was like 10. I was so mad that the Eagles lost. And then I heard my dad from his chair. My dad, man, a few words, you know, emotions, no. Going, oh, my God. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. And me running around to see Herm Edwards running into the end zone. That one. The Brian Westbrook one. That Yeah, that was a good one. I was very much, I hate to say this, but very much not feeling well after I was up in South Bend, Indiana. We had been to the um, Notre Dame, I believe, Michigan game the day before. We were watching that game in there. And then where were you for the Deshaun Jackson one? Do you remember? I don't remember where I was for that game. I don't remember. I remember enjoying it. I do yeah. remember enjoying it. Hold on, we're running out of time. I want to get to these two YouTube ones too, Bob, because these ahead. are good ones. Rick Morse, the Padres want to block Bryce Harper's home run oh. to send the Phillies to the World Series. That is a great, great one. one. And then this one's excellent. David Rubo. The Bruins losing in Game 7, being up 3-0 in the series, and then 3-0 in Game 7. That definitely one they want to block out. Good one, guys, on YouTube. Do you remember who scored the winning goal for the Flyers? Is that Simone Gagne? Very good, Bill. I am thoroughly impressed. All right, I am showing people on the YouTube page how to use pr proper protection today on your eyes. For the um, for the eclipse, uh, Dylan McKinnon was kind enough to give me these sunglasses that his mom bought and put in his Easter. <laughs> that cracked me up. Dylan said his mom gave him a present in his Easter basket. He said, "I'm a 30 year old man getting my Easter basket." <laughs> anyway, if you are going out today, please make sure you have proper eyewear, proper protection at all times. So we're down with that. Sixers. Have the most hope in this. Oh, you know what? Let me get to Joe. I'm sorry. Joe in Pennsville. You're on 97.5 The Fanatic. What's up, Joe? How you doing, guys? Good. Uh, I got two, actually. One good for the for the uh, Philly fans and one bad. All right. Uh, I bet the, uh, the Russians wish they didn't come to Philly back in the, in the 70s to play the Flyers. When Wait, say that one NHL. again. I had trouble hearing you there. Say that again. When the Russians came to the NHL, playing all the NHL teams. That was a great one. Andre, Andre DuPont. Yeah, and they fly kick their butt. And then uh, the, the bad one is uh, Roy Halliday. It was one nothing to Chris Carpenter, 2011. Oh, that's a good that's a good one there. Thanks, Joe. Appreciate it. you. Got a lot of noise going on there in the background. The Russians a good one. That was a good one. The Russians Sunday. I can remember that day. You say these moments like you probably remember where you were sitting in my living room at my parents' house. Again, I was a little kid, and watching that. And this guy Andre Moose Dupont hits a Russian guy to the ice, and they get up and leave. See, I, I wasn't alive when it happened, but I grew up being told the story oh. by my grandparents and my parents because they just loved it so much. Because it was funny at the time, Bill, the Russians were playing different NHL teams and beating them like 10 nothing, 8-1. I mean, they were crushing them. So my understanding was nobody in the NHL liked the Broad Street Bullies, no. but they all loved them that game and said, go get it. Yeah, so the story was Andre DuPont makes this hit. The Russians walked off the ice. Ed Snyder walked down in the, into the uh, Russian locker room and I guess got an interpreter and said, uh, basically, you know play, you know get paid. And it's funny, the Russians went back out on the ice <laughs> and proceeded to get their asses kicked 4-1. to one. Bernie Prant didn't even play that game. It was Wayne Stevenson. Man, the, 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 
it's crazy. The, the memory, stuff right? It is, isn't it nuts, the stuff you remember? And you brought up earlier today, you're like, I'm going to be 41 soon, man. I don't know. I'm starting to feel it. It never leaves, though. Like the sports memories, that's the coolest thing. They never leave. That's why we love sports. That's why we do. We also love you guys for joining us today. Couldn't be happier because of that. Please be careful out there. No glancing. No, you know, cover our eyes and open the fingers and look. Don't do it. Get the proper glasses if you're going to try to enjoy the eclipse that we have coming up. Ray, you will be in teaching, so you won't you won't have to come across it at all. Bill, if you so decide to glance, I implore you to go get some sunglasses for yourself, the special kind, the one that Dylan's mom's. I got to get them for my kids because they're going to want to look. I don't have the glasses for the kids. Uh, yeah, protect your children. Make sure you know do whatever you have to. What about dogs? Can they look, Ray? No. Okay. Don't, Nobody look. No, I'm just trying to, I, I'm still trying to find somebody that got blinded by it. It's time for us to get out of here. It is. We thank you all. We will be back tomorrow morning. Bill will be joining us once again tomorrow morning, 10 a.m. Stay tuned for the best show ever, 97.5 The Fanatic. Fanatic Sports Update. Sixers win in San Antonio. I'm Ray Dunn. This update is brought to you by Family and Company Jewelers. Save hundreds of